तो गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल मैडम क्या स्टार्ट करें या एक आध दो मिनट रुके अभी अभी ट्वेंटी फाइव पार्टिसिपेंट्स दिखा रहा करीब बाईस के आसपास हमारे पास कैंडिडेट होंगे तीन लोग तो हम ही हैं ऑर्गेनाइजिंग टीम के हम लोग स्टार्ट करते हैं एंड वेलकम पार्टिसिपेंट्स इन डे फाइव सेशन वन ऑफ अटल एफ डी पी विच इज ऑर्गेनाइज बाई उत्तराखंड ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी हल्द्वानी उत्तराखंड uh i hope uh, you are doing well so we have uh, professor nirnalini saha with us and uh, i want to share her brief introduction uh with you all uh, she is eu postdoc fellow cscp fellow she is ex professor imt gaziabad nm ims university as well as consultant and trainer she is ccr chair professor at athens university of economics and business greece she has achieved european commission's post doctoral fellowship she is certified supply chain professional fellow and stanford and nem certified entrepreneurship educator she is nominated as ccr chair professor of innovation by republic of india to republic republic of greece and served at athens university of economics and business professor saha taught at premium business schools including iim raipur imt gaziabad nm ims university manipal university dubai auib greece warsaw university poland ort university uruguay and so on her area of expertise are perspective analytics machine learning supply chain management and analytics entrepreneurship development her today's topic is neural network analysis for pattern recognition we are very uh, you know uh, feeling proud that we have such dignity such profile with us once again i i warm welcome professor saha कि आप हमारे साथ जुड़े आप हमारी इस 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 प्रोग्राम की आपने जो है गरिमा को और बढ़ाया है एंड आई 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 वेलकम प्रोफेसर साहब फ्रॉम ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ उत्तराखंड ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी नाउ आई विल हैंड ओवर द सेशन टू प्रोफेसर साह प्रोफेसर साह प्लीज प्रोसीड थैंक यू सो वेरी मच डॉक्टर गोपाल थैंक यू फॉर सच अस एंड एलेबोरेट इंट्रोडक्शन i'm very thankful to dr ashutosh uh and the whole uou team the whole organizers team uh, who found me worthy of taking uh, such a session for faculty uh, members across the country i welcome all the participants here uh so let's start with the session there are about 38 people right now so uh let's see what can we do about it right so we'll start taking the session you just have to tell me whether my screen is visible or not yes ma'am visible ma'am yeah so can you see my slides yes ma'am right so i'll yeah with this uh my first thing to you all is um as you know my topic of today is pattern recognition with neural network i'm going to do this with the help of a software and the software is specifically when it started it started for spss uh, statistical programming but as the world is moving towards uh machine learnings and the related things obviously the software itself also has uh, changed a lot i've been attending the sessions with you all and i thought 
that you are already familiar with a lot of concepts. So let me just take you towards the hand-on exercise. So that's going to be the objective today. My first question to the participants is, are you familiar with uh, SPSS earlier? Have you done SPSS earlier? Anyone? Uh, Ma'am, actually participants are uh, muted. So uh, they can they... always write on chat. Yeah, I know they are yes. muted. G. So they can perhaps write on chat. Okay, I received two reply, one saying I'm new to it, someone is saying I'm, I have the basic understanding of spaces. All right, uh, let's take it the way which will be convenient both for the beginners as well as for the people who are experienced to it up to an extent. Can you recognize this? Anyone? You can write on your chat box again if you can recognize this photograph. The girl is a robot. Yes. Uh, it's a uh, almost like 30 or more than 30. In fact, it's about 35 year old uh, serial. Uh, and the name of the serial was a small wonder. So uh, this girl was a robot and I would like to show you a quick two minute video on it. So let's, all right. Uh, Can you see this now? Is my screen visible to you all? Yeah, yeah, it's visible, ma'am. Visible, ma'am, visible. Visible, right? And can you hear the uh, voice? I think it's oh, not. Audible. Voice is not. Voice is not there. All right, so I'll uh, just give me a second. Meanwhile, I'll just activate the voice as well. Ma'am, there is an option while sharing screen. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's what I'm doing. Uh, sharing the video, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. Enable just give me, give me a second. Yes, I'm just doing that only. Uh, and we'll share. Table that gets all the dishes dirty. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, listen, honey, I'm, I'm much too. All this size cries and wet. Working on nights. Mm -hmm. oh. Wiggle nose. <laughs> <Smart. laughs> <Smart. Smart. laughs> now, for the final touch, respond. Let's that thing we do every night at the table that gets all the dishes dirty? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, listen, honey, I'm, I'm much too excited to eat. Now, uh, after all these weeks of uh, patiently waiting, I'd like you both to meet Vicky. Vicky? Oh, you're my voice input child identicant. V-I-C-I, -I, I, I pronounce it Vicky. <laughs> Vicky. <Yeah>. That's cute. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> Come in here, Vicky. Say hello to my family. Hello to my family. <laughs> oh, Ted, are you putting this on? That's a real kid, right? No, no, it's a robot. Oh, Ted, that's incredible. I, I can't believe what I'm seeing. Oh, yeah, yeah, get a load of this. <clears throat> what time is it, Dickie? 
when you hear the tone, the time will be 5, 43, and 20 seconds. <laughs> Man, that's wild! Looks like a real girl, Dad! And it feels like a girl. Oh, yeah, it's a new synthetic material they use for artificial limbs. Just like real skin. And it smells like a girl. Well, I use some of Mom's perfume. Hey, do, you, do you like the way I dressed her, Joni? Oh, and that's real human hair. Uh, do you like it, Joni? I mean, would you rather have a redhead? <laughs> no, no, that's all right. Uh, please, put it back. <clears throat> So how do you like it? Ted, I'm lost for words. It suddenly like having another child in the house. Yeah, only this time I gave birth. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, the, the, the real question is, can it be programmed to have human values and emotions? Or, or even human faults? What a challenge, huh? Dad. So, the question where I want to and that slide was, can we create human-like robots? This girl was programmed to be looking like a girl. Uh, it's a machine, it's a robot. And they even created the artificial lens, which felt like human. And the experimentation which the director assumed is, can they actually have feelings? So what do you think? Can we actually have feelings in a robot? Can the robot think, feel like us? Can they cry like us, right? And that's the word we are, or we yet need to find answer. But this serial also tells me that first the imagination happens and then the creation happens. Though in real world, we still do not have a robot which can actually uh, see or behave like a human being. But this is another thing which a question arises. So we'll start with that by taking that question in our mind that can artificial neural networks, can neural networks, can artificial intelligence create a human-like person? But that's a broader one. Let's talk about today's objective. So learning objective of today's session is to learn prediction techniques on experiences and to avoid pitfalls. I'm aware that you have done uh, linear regression yesterday. You have gone through uh, many of the questions on and how to use it on Python, et cetera, till now. So my sole objective to show it to you all will be that we do not repeat whatever you have covered, but still we see how to avoid some of the pitfalls, to avoid neural network techniques, of course, and to be able to interpret the result on the software. What is basically the objective of any faculty development program? The objective of, I, I have been on either side of this uh, session. I have attended many faculty development programs, one or two U-Haul, where I was certified through Stanford. I've gone through the advanced uh, uh, education management program from Harvard Business School. So there, what we have learned that the basic objective of these programs are to help us to become a good faculty, to help us to become an effective researcher, and of course, to become a good practitioner. So let me tell you brief about myself i started with computer science department so i am phd in computer science and back then uh it's when i started my phd it was more than 20 years i worked on fuzzy logic so fuzzy propositional logic which is basically a basis of neural network and in my whole phd uh, though i didn't work on softwares but i developed the model so i used gaming clustering etc etc to work on prediction. I work extensively on time series predictions. Uh, some of my papers will find and export systems, etc., cetera, send, uh, and sprinkles and many such things. And later on, after starting my career in uh, computer science, I moved to management side of it. So I started teaching to MBA and that change happened almost after a 10 year. 
And while teaching in MBA courses, I realized that whatever we know, it's so important for us to teach the students, the professional ones, whether they are the part of industry, uh, engineering courses, MCA, MBA, that they become a good practitioner. And in order to them to become a good pr practitioner, in order for them to use the techniques in applications to develop the tools, techniques uh, relevant to the real world, we ourselves has to find that same first. So I'll try to cover the session in these uh, three modes, where I'll try to tell you that how can you take it in your research or faculty and all. And you're most welcome to ask question at any moment. So please do ask questions so that it become a very interactive session. So when we are talking about creating the emotions into robots, so we are already familiar that nowadays we are talking about machine learning and deep learning, right? These are the approaches to solve problems. The difference between these techniques and a Python script is that ML and DL use training data instead of hard coded rules. But all of them can be used to solve problems using AI. You are already familiar with supervised learning and unsupervised learning. Can anyone tell me the difference between the supervised and unsupervised? You can write your options on chat box. Uh, you, you must have heard the example of the cats and dogs. So in supervised, you must have seen it number of times on the internet, etc. that if we give few pictures of dogs and cats and we write dogs and cat, right? And then we show a picture to the system. Can sister put it in the category of dogs and cats? That becomes where we tell and give the label to the testing data that becomes supervised learning. In unsupervised learning, though, we give, yes, absolutely right. Classification is supervised. SL uses labels, train, and test. Depends on experience and examples. That's true. And in unsupervised learning, we do not give any label, right? So what happens with the same dogs and cats picture, if you do not write where is dog or where is cat, the system now has a liberty to either identify the pictures like dogs and cats, or it can also identify it's indoor versus outdoor, it's in water versus in uh, land kind of effects. So uh, these are the common ones and you're already familiar with it. So I'll not touch it again. I'll get into the next one. Now, when you're talking about the machine learning, there are three things which we do. Right? The first one which we do is we predict the numerical outcomes for the variables. So when we predict the numerical outcomes for the variables, the techniques used are linear regression or multiple regression. So today I'll try to show you linear and multiple regression uh, on a species of course and how to measure the pitfalls or overfittings, et cetera, et cetera. The second is classification classify to which category a new project belongs to. So we have logic regressions, we have, sorry, we have logist regression, we have, uh, clusters, uh, sorry, K nearest neighbor uh, cluster, and then when we go for cluster. So I'm going to touch upon the prediction part of it, linear regression, neural, multiple regression, and of course the neural network in general so that you can apply any and every of this. Let me also tell you that uh, SPSS gives you the option to use any and every of it. And it's a very user friendly that way for the people who are just going to use it for application part of it, right? Please read this. So what happened today? We are not using our brains most of the time. We are using the computers, the phones, the WhatsApps, the Facebooks, et cetera, et cetera. Though all of these techniques are excellent, for example, the system, 
right now we are face to face only and only because of the system we can take this class in this virtual environment only because of this but what we require throughout the session is use of our brains so let's get back to finding a balance between the two and use our brains i somebody forwarded it to me yesterday and i found it so wonderful that i thought let me use it here all right so let's go for prediction and linear regression right i'll directly ask you to go through the, the open the first file the data file which uh, dr ashutosh must have sent you you have got an excel file which has three sheets if you'll see the very first sheet uh, you can open that sheet later uh, but so how are we going to do go about it is first i'll show you then i'll give you 2 3 minutes time so that you can follow it all right so you have the first uh, sheet in which we have the we have to predict the year wise sale and sale for a particular company this particular thing is very much useful in business analytics so nowadays the companies do not want to spend the money just like that so they try to see how much are they spending on advertisement and then what and how it is impacting their business so say for example they are launching a new product so what is happening how much advertisements are given in different kind of media and you get all these kind of data in uh, either in your internal systems or through google analytics kind of thing you can also want to check that uh, what how much money you are spending on uh, promotions and then whether the promotion has an impact sometimes we also want to figure out whether our competitor sale is going to affect us or not so if i am launching a new mobile phone i as a samsung let's say and uh, let's say oppo has also launched this at the same time or nokia let's say as long as at the same time so does their sale affects us how does it affects us etc etc so to begin with i'll just start with two variable x and y you are already familiar with it so uh, and then we'll try to see what do we do so how to start a spaces the minute uh, you will go into your ibm spaces you will open and you'll get this kind of a window all right in this window the first one is the menu bar here at the bottom you will see variable view so you have to define what all kinds of variables you have right and then you will enter into the data so this is when you start from the beginning so sometimes uh, you know you go for a survey and you prepare a questionnaire you ask the people to fill in the data or you have otherwise data and then you fill it so you you may have two kinds of situation one where you have excel ready with you for example i have given you which is a part of secondary data and second is where you have the primary data and you want to enter it from the beginning so if you want to enter it from the beginning from the start then you have to go through this uh, defining all those things and then only you can enter it all right now if you are going as we are going so then you will once you will uh, go for variable view you will get some of these so first one will be name of the variable second is variable type whether you have to write whether it is a numeric whether it is a string etc you define its width you define its label number of decimals and then you also define values as and when required all right so uh, in our case we already have an excel data Uh, we can enter any of the form of excel so i have given you excel as form slx uh, form and i have also given you a csv data so i'll try to show you how to go about it okay uh so let me skip this and let me open the excel file first so this is our data file since i'm sharing the screen so i'm sure you can see this so this is my first set of data if i want to use this i have also given you a complete set of data where we have first year promotions first year competitors so in this what we are interested in is this sales data i also want to check if we add one more variable how 
or what kind of an impact can it have? So what I'll do is I'll directly go to SPSS and we'll show you how to open it. So once you will go, you will be seeing this IBM SPSS and in this SPSS statistics. So your system will open. All right. Now, if I would have been starting from the beginning while I have to enter the data, then I would have canceled it. But since I want to open an existing file, so I'll go in, open an existing data file. Okay. When you go and open existing data file, it will give you options of this. Here you click on this more files. So I have the option because I have uh, the files here with me, like uh, you can see I have linear regression file and all and a student performance file, which I'm planning to take today. But I'll try to take from the, uh, this on if you are uh, all right, let's go on this. Okay, now what happens? This window gets open. But as you have noticed, we are not working on SPSS file for the timing. We do not have SPSS data. SPSS data has an extension of SCV. Since my Excel file is XLS, so I'll click on Excel file here. Okay, and then wherever you have kept your data. So in my case, my data is in my FDP folder and it's online purchase intention. No, uh, sorry. We are going on sales analytics, linear regression. Okay. When I click on this and I say open, what happens now? Because you have three worksheets. So it will ask which sheet you want to open. So we had initial data, complete data, and snowfall data. So I am clicking on third so that in one go itself, I have the complete set of data. If you have a limited range, you can define the limited range as well here and click on OK. And you'll be able to see this. All right. Now I give this time to you. Please try that and tell me whether you could do it or not. Once you are able to open it, just simply type yes. If you want me to repeat it, please let me know, I'll repeat. Nidhi, could you uh, open the SPSS first? Okay. In SPSS, your difficulty is how to open the uh, file, right? A lot of people have written, yes, ma'am. I just, okay. But Nidhi is the only person who said uh, repeat. I'm not very sure that all the other people also want me to repeat, but let me see. because I won't be able to repeat the full thing as such because my data file is now already open, but it's still. Uh, so when you go into this, you go to open, there are two ways, all right? So in this case, if I want to open the file, I'll go to file, I'll go to open and I can click on data. So if you do not understand how to go about it at the first time, you can just simply come through this also. So another way, is just simply once you have a space is open, maybe you can cancel it. And then after canceling, you will see a window which will be absolutely blank, all right? So in that absolute blank window, we go and we say open and open a data file. 
here we have the options of getting what kind of a data file we want. So I want an Excel file. It's already in my folder. So it will show me sales and analytics the regression. And I just click on open and my data file will get opened. I hope all of you could open it now. Right. So once we have done this, let's understand what all to do with it. Right. So first thing what we'll do is now let's see our variables. So click, as I told you earlier, here at the bottom right, you can see the variable. Right. And here you can see the data file. Now, in this, the first one is sales reason, the name. The second one is, and it has automatically taken the value. But if you'll actually check your Excel file, you will realize that some of your data is actually in decimal, right? And our SPSS file has not taken the decimal number. So let's first decide the decimal. So go into the decimal and increase the decimal number here. Go into the second, increase the decimal and put one or two decimal uh, digits based on what whatever kind of your, you have a data. Sometimes you will have even three digits, so you can do that. Second is the label. Label is basically talking about what this data is. You can see that it has taken the full name. So first year says, which is our Y variable, First year advertisement, promotions, competition, and annual sales. All right. If we have a different kind of a data, it tells us. If we are working on missing data, it also gives us a liberty how to deal with the missing data. Right. For the timing, it is none because I don't have a missing data. Otherwise, it gives you an option that how to deal with the missing data directly from the software itself. You don't have to type the commands and all those things. Now, here comes what kind of a data you are talking about. So if you see Maison, this is extremely important. It has taken this as nominal, but it's not a nominal one. It's actually a scale data. Uh, what is a scale data? Are you familiar? Nominal, ordinal, and scale data? Are you familiar with the data? data and data types. Okay, uh, let me uh, describe you. What is a nominal data? So nominal data, as the name suggests, is for the namesake, all right? Ordinal data is where you ask the people to give you opinion. Say, let's say you have seen number of questions, right? So if you um, go to a restaurant, a restaurant asks you to give your feedback. And the question is, how did you like the food? Give it on a rating from one to five. Now here, the, the difference given to you is one, two, three, four, five. So it is a discrete number. And whatever is three for me might differ for you. So maybe I have a very high expectation of food and I say, okay, so food is okay, not very great. And you had low expectation from that restaurant. So you find the food, oh, it's good. So I give it three, you give it four. That means here the numbers are one, two, three, four. But the difference between one and two, two and three, three and four is not exactly the same because it's your opinion and my opinion. Being a fuzzy logic uh, researcher, I'll always say that the, our opinions are actually a humanistic variables, right? So here that kind of a data becomes ordinal data. And whatever you call as a continuous variable, that becomes a scale. So it has a real numbers. So here, because we are talking about sales data and sales data can be in any number. So uh, yes, so rank when you say, uh, uh, rank it becomes ordinal. Yes, nominal and ordinal data are categorical in nature, but there is a still a difference between nominal and ordinal data. Uh, so thank you, Dr. Nandi for your input. Now here, all of this was scale. So I'm just putting it as a scale, right? So first I cleared this. 
Now, if I go to the data, I see that despite giving a scale, it has not given me the right number. So what I'll do is, I'll just simply go to my Excel file and I'll copy the data. Simply you can copy. So this is another way to take the data. So if you do not define the data at the beginning, sometimes we just simply open our file and just click it over here. So I have copied the file and I'll just highlight it over here and control V. So I pasted the data as simple as this. All right. So please do this much and then let me know if you are, if you are through. I'm giving you five minutes. Please do this much. And once you are done, let me know by typing yes. What you have to do, let me repeat. Go to the variable view in your file. Check whether the decimal points are as per your data, whether the measures are as per your data or not. After that, check your data and compare whether your data is right exactly as per uh, Excel file. Or if not, then copy it from Excel and just simply paste the data here. Only the data, not the uh, labeling of it. And once you are through, let me know. All right, done till now.
All right. So now once you have this file and you have this data, what you have to do is you will go to regression and in regression, your commands are analyzed and then we'll go to regression and then we'll go to linear regression, all right? And then we have to define dependent variable and independent variable. Uh, the question of uh, which tool is better for analysis, spaces or machine learning, I'll show you the machine learning as well. So don't worry about it, and then you can decide. So it's it's not about which tool is better. Both tools are better, depending upon what kind of applications you have, right? And uh, SPSS also gives us, uh, I'm showing you SPSS because SPSS, I just wanted to uh, make you familiarize that you can directly deal with this as well, and it works in the same level. But I'll show you some of the uh, pitfalls to make you understand some of the, just the concept. So for the timing, we can use spaces for network data analysis. Um, I have done a course on social network data analysis, which we are typically dealt on uh, spaces. So there is no, uh, no doubt about it, all right? Now let's go into the linear one. So for the timing, I'll just take one. So my, now how do you go about it? Pick your first year sales, which is your dependent variable. That means, which is your Y. Your first year advertisement, go on independence. I just want to show you some of the data and some of the pitfalls of it. That's it. So I'll just quickly finish it because I want to go into the network analysis. Uh, so here we have this. I want R square to be, uh, I just want descriptive if you want I rested. If you're not, uh, then you can check on it. It can check on any and every kind of your uh, data. Otherwise, you are just fit with the very basic of continuous. If you want to save your data, you have the option to save your predicted value, standardize or unstandardized, whatever you want. I don't want to save any value for the time being. You have the option to see the residuals. You can also predict the mean of individuals, etc. All right. You also have the options to go for this probability functions. So I just click on, okay, I just wanted one more thing out of it. That's okay. Plots. If you want to plot the normality probability curves of histograms, you have the option to do so as well. I don't want to save anything. All right, just click on OK. So what happens? Another window will get open. And this output window will show you this. Now, what to look for in this window is the value of this R. OK, so you got, I have just kept it over here. So I would like to show it to you from here. And you check for R. Okay, so your R in this first case is 0 0.709. Correlation coefficient 709 means 70% they are positively correlated. Sometimes we also check for R square, but since it's a simple linear regression, I don't need to. The second thing which you check will the model's robustness. See what happens is most of the time when you have done it without the software, we only check R and we only check what kind of equation we are getting but that's not correct as per uh, the uh, deep analysis. So you need to check whether your model is robust or not. And in order to see your model's robustness, you will have to check this table, which is your ANOVA table. Now in ANOVA table, what do we check? We check the significant value. If the significant value is lesser than 0 0.5, 0 0.05, that means 5% significance level, 0.05, then we say null hypothesis is accepted. That is model is robust. Once you do this, then you have to go for what kind of a data you are talking about. So here comes your coefficient of regressions. So in this case, if I have to write, my equation becomes, we say A plus B, right? So in A plus B situations, our system becomes like uh, you have, uh, 
a which is a constant value yeah y is equal to mx plus c if you say now it's not mx plus c it's a plus b so the intercept is 42 and the x coefficient if i say a plus b c it is 59 so my equation will become 42.143 plus 59 or let me call it 60 for the time being uh, if i just want to round it off 60 into uh, advertisement expenditure okay the fourth thing which you need to know is whether these values are significant or not so if you are saying this first year coefficient or second year coefficient whether these coefficients are significant or not that means sometimes the number just show you a, a value which does not make any sense for the uh, situation all right and the fourth thing which we'll be careful about is 95 percent confidence interval what does 95 confidence interval say is that if you are looking at the coefficient so here in your coefficient you have a value of uh, 24 this value uh, which is your 24.185 to 90 sorry this 24 value to this 95 so your coefficient, which has a value of 60, 95% of the time, it will vary between 24 to 95%. That's what is its confidence interval. So 5% times, it may go uh, somewhere different also. Because you will have to remember that uh, regression never predicts outside the scope of the data itself. Okay. Is that clear? Okay. So now you try it on SPSS. All right. How will you go on SPSS? I repeat, go on analyze, go on regression, click on linear. Once you click on linear, identify your dependent and independent variable. Just check whether your values are proper, which is just model fit and this for the timing. Just continue, click OK and see what do you get. You will get this window. Try and let me know whether you could do it or not. Done. Could you find this? One person has done. I'm waiting for a few more people to tell me whether they could do it.
I saw four people saying we have done. Should I assume that everybody could do it? All right, so with that, let's see now what happens next. Okay, so once we got this, what if we had more data, right? Can we do even better than this? And mind it, uh, you have the option to save the file. The minute you will say that predict the data, it will automatically create the predicted data for you so that you have a testing at the uh, final values with you. Now, if I take a few more data, right? So uh, I have four more expenses for expenditure, which I will have most of the time. I'm here also taking for uh, competitor sales data. More often than not, in real life situation, you will not have exactly the competitor sale data for that particular product. But here for the academic purpose, you're just assuming that we have this data. So what we have to do is the same process, go to regression, go to analyze, and this time take the two more variables there, right? Computer sale data and uh, expenses data and run regression again. And check, what do you get? So here I'll go and analyze regression, linear regression, and I'll just click two more. I'll say uh, my first year promotion and my first uh, first year competitions one are also my independent variable. Here for the sake of this, I can also show you that how can you save the data. So if you want to save the standardized value or unstandardized value, if you want, you can even save the adjusted value. It will only increase the three more variables for you, all right? And continue. And then click. So here you have many such things that if you do not want to take the data for a whole set, or if you want to take the data for something else, then how will you go about it, all right? So click on this and you get another set of data. Now what happened, observe this file very carefully. In this file, what do you see? You see our value now increased to 0.91. That means it has immediately increased your correlation. But the minute you're going to go into more than one variable, instead of R or R square, we start looking for adjusted R square as well. So here, when you say R square is 0.833, uh, it has increased from the first case, right? Does that mean that now my data or my model is better than before? Instead of taking a decision right now, let's see the other coefficients. So you will see that significance has increased. That means now the model is becoming more robust. If you see the coefficients, here you get that now your coefficient for first year sale is 49. For first year promotion, it is 59. First year computer sales, it is uh, minus 1.826. All right. All these values are significant. You can see that it is 0 0.001, 0 0.028, and 0 0.046. In all three cases, it is less than 0 0.05, and hence it is uh, significant, all right? So when you see this, you get this kind of an example. Now, how to observe this? Of course, you need to compare it for its R value. So in simple regression case, your R was 0 0.05, 0 0.503, 0 0.709, R and R squared 0.503. In multiple regression, both R, R square and adjusted R square has increased. That means your model is now better than before. So most often than not, as a researcher, your question will be, 
how to pick the variable. Okay, it's very easy when you have a given data set and then you just have to fit it. But as a researcher, you will not have the data set. So what happens is when you go through the different kinds of readings, you have certain hypothesis in mind. For example, you may think that, okay, so if you are talking about, let's say, popularity, my popularity increases if I write on SPSS, uh, if I uh, write on Facebook, if I am available on LinkedIn, if I tweet a lot. So these are your hypotheses. It is possible that, now, should you take all three or there are more such variables? So initially, you should always try with one or two variables and see after fitting the model. Then, if you want to increase the variables, increase the variables one, two, three. I mean, one by one, two or three at a time so that you can see the impact of that variable on your actual final fit model. R is just a proof that your correlation is increasing or not. Along with R, you will always have to see ANOVA as well so that your model's robustness comes into play. Your model should be significant. The second thing is when you even check your coefficients, so not only these coefficients are important, but its significance is extremely important. If any of the coefficient is not found statistically significant, that coefficient need to have a relook. Okay, you cannot say that my this model is now, this is my equation of the model. So in this case, I see all the four which are relevant. Okay, so, R square has increased, R adjusted R square has also increased, and adjusted R square is basically explained variance. So in case of multiple regression, the role which R square plays in simple linear regression, adjusted R square plays the same role in multiple linear regression, all right? So it tells us what kind of explained variance. That means if I go for this model summary, 78.7% variance of the final sale can be explained through these three independent variables. That is my uh, advertisement expense, my promotion expense, and my competitor sale. And the equation we have, right? Now let's experiment with something more as well. But before I get, I don't know how much you are familiar with p-values and linear regression, which we call as significant. So just have a quick look at it. And that's why I was saying that the significance value should be lesser than 0 0.05 because you are dealing with a 5% level of significance. Okay. So lower the p-value, lower the significance value, more meaningful it is addition to your knowledge, to your model. And obviously, it will converse to a larger uh, value statistic. Now, let's, let's take one more thing. Let's add another feature, which was a snowfall. Do you think that the snowfall is going to have an impact on my sale of the product? Might not be, okay. By chance, uh, by the way, this data is actually for wine sale. And it is taken in Europe. So I just picked it uh, from available data bank. And sometimes we think that the snowfall may have, but uh, sometimes the snowfall has no impact on this. So how do you realize that it has an impact or it does not have an impact on this? So just adding this with extra variable into this, let's see whether it is a good predictor or not. Okay, I'll go to my species file again, analyze, regression, linear, and I'll add this value of average snowfall. Now, you can see in your Excel, three more variables has increased because if you remember an earlier case, I clicked on save the variables. So I put it here. My statistics is fine. I can check for R values change if I want. For the time being, I don't want to get into any of those uh, things. I don't want anything to be saved for the time being. 
while just I'm not clicking on any of these. I'm going for options. which is fine. Uh, and if you see, this has the missing value treatment as well. So if your data is missing, you have only three options, right? Either you exclude the case, or you take the pairwise case, or you take the mean. So it has a direct application here that you can go. Now, okay. Once I did that, what did I observe? Look at my R. Do you think that my R has increased? from the previous case, it has, right? Now it is 0.926. In earlier case, it was only 0.9. My R square has also increased and my adjusted R square has also increased. So should I say that this snowfall has an impact? Any opinion? Let's go further. So R square has increased. What's about this ANOVA? This ANOVA is still significant. This is 0 0.00. And as I told you, the P value should be lesser than this. That means this model also looks like robust model. Now let's have a closure look at this coefficient values. OK. I missed putting one thing here. So let me also do one more thing. I wanted it to give me 95% confidence interval. So I'm clicking on 95% confidence interval. And I'll tell you why I'm clicking on it. Why it is so important to see this. So you saw R increase, you saw ANOVA increase. Now let's have a look at this table. What do you see here is your coefficients and its significance. Number one, it is not coming as significant as you can see. This value is 0.225. That means it is more than 0.05. And hence, this coefficient is not significant. How do you check it? You can see it on 95% confidence interval as well. Now, if you see 95% confidence interval, you see this value moving from minus 0.225 till 0.848. That means a zero is also coming in between because the value is on either side of zero. So if it is both side, either a positive or negative, that's okay. Because then it is telling you that the values will come here. But here in this case, after adding this value, the coefficient 95% confidence interval has moved from 0.225 to 0.848. That means zero point is also coming. And what will happen if the zero point will come? Then its impact will be zero, right? That means this is an overfitted model. So most often than not, the mistake which we do is of course, when we check R and R square and we find, and this will be true when you are using R or Python or any software, okay? So it is software, uh, I mean, irrespective of the software, the rule remains the same. So the, my basic purpose to show you it over here was to show you this output and to tell you where the overfitting happens. So in general, in a statistics, we say that R and R square increases. That means another variable is relevant for the model. And then in the process, we keep on adding the variables. The minute we see, okay, R square is going down, we say, okay, so this variable can be removed. But that's not the truth. What you have to see along with this is obviously, and all the time, this 95% confidence interval. The minute your value goes 
in this 95% confidence interval, if one value is minus and one value is positive, that means zero also comes. And if you notice, this first year computer say, which was earlier on one side, has also now become unstable. That means at any minute, if you use a variable which is actually not relevant for your model, it may destabilize your other variables as well. Okay, and that's what we call the pitfalls. So my question was, why this is a good predictor or not? So avoid overfit, right? And when you avoid overfitting, as I've shown you over here, this is what happens in this situation. You get certain things which are not relevant. And this is what you need to do. Is that clear? So that's all for regression. Any question on regression, please let me know so that I can move to neural network analysis quickly. Are you guys following me? Do you follow the uh, concept? So, I'll go to the next one, all right? Let's see the next. So, in ML, it's a common phenomenon which you are already familiar with, that we have a training data, we need to go to ML algorithm, and then we have a test data, we make a model, and then we predict the result. Now, when you talk about the variables, we say input variable, target variable, and unused variable, input variables are also an independent variable. It's also called features or attributes. And when you work on this, the input variables can be either continuous, binary, or categorical. So it can be scale, ordinal, or any such thing. When you're talking about target variable, it is your dependent variable. In regression problems, targets are continuous variables. Okay, But in neural network, in classification, targets can be binary. That is the fault rate or the churn, et cetera, or categorical. That is the type of objective, activity, etc. Right? In this type of applications, targets are also called categorical or labels. Unused variable, which you don't want to use for some purpose. Now, why would you not like to use it for some purpose? Because it's neither the target, it doesn't affect, it can be a constant value. It or sometimes you need to delete it, else it will complicate the whole model unnecessarily. Right, so these are the three kinds of the variables which we usually deal with. Now, there are instances. What is instances? Instances are recorded in rows and data table, and you're already familiar with it. It's also, also refer as sample of data points, which is in usual. So your training instance are used to construct models. Selection instance are used for choosing the neural network with the best generalization properties. And in this way, you will be able to construct different models with the training subset and select the one that works best on the selected subset. Then you go for testing instance, and then you go for unused. So obviously, unused instances has to be deleted because it might distort. So for example, outliers in the data can make the neural network to work inefficient. So in these kind of situations, we will uh, delete these instances, okay? Now, we are already familiar with that in neural network, we have an input level, we have a hidden layer, and then we have an output layer. And in between this input layer and uh, uh, output layers, we have the weights, right? So this is one hidden layer, there can be many hidden layers. There are nodes, for example, in this case, it's one, two, three, four, five. So five nodes in the layer. You have three input variables, you have two output variables. It's, it's just for the showing you a purpose. Yes, Kavita, you have a question, I assume.
Can you type the question or you want to speak? I don't think I can uh, put you on a uh, speaking mode, Kavita. I don't think I have that rights. So you will have to type your question. Kavita has raised the hand. All right, we'll see to it later then. Otherwise, type your question and then uh, I'll reply to you here. Sorry. Now, in this case, so you have input, then you have weights. Along with the weights, you also have bias. And that combination takes you towards output. So you every these arrow is actually a weight. Okay, these are also referred as synaptics. So you're already familiar with the synaptics. I'm not covering this as a theory. You have covered enough in the last four days. I'll just take you towards how to use it and how to integrate it. So I'm taking a data which is available on Kaggle. You might already be familiar that in Kaggle, you can find all of these data sets. For example, the loan data set, which most of the people covered is available there. Uh, the glucometer data is available there. Uh, online purchasing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So all of us, the researchers, we work on certain data. We just find the data from Google Analytics and then put it there. So if you'll go into this book, Kaggle.net, you will get this data. Okay. So this data is available here. This is student performance data, and then along with that, uh, sorry for this interruption. There's a lot of uh, wind here, so my doors are. Nothing. Not. And in this case, now, uh, when you go, you can download it directly from this link. Then you can, I mean, there will be enough data in Kaggle. So just note down Kaggle if you're not familiar with till now. And then you can do for the time being. I have already given you the data, so you don't need to download it. Now, in this data, even within the file, there will be enough information about what kind of a data you have. That is how many variables are there, what all variables are there, et cetera, et cetera. So in this case, there are um, eight variables, which is uh, input variables taken as gender, race, parental level of education, lunch, test preparation. So what happened was the people wanted to know how a student scored or a study or perform in the uh, examination. So they checked it on three aspects. One was what was their mathematical score, uh, score in math subjects, what is their total reading score and what is their total writing score? The assumption was that uh, the which gender the people are from, it affects their score. And for that, I have a very interesting story to tell you. So I'm from maths background, as you uh, have already heard, and from a very different time and era. So when I was actually taking this uh, maths, so a lot of people told me that, uh, you know, uh, why do you want to take maths? Uh, and in my class, we used to take maths from class 11 itself. Uh, till 10th, it's youth. I was only, we were only part of five students. When I went to the university, we were uh, two girls only in computer science, only two girls. Of course, that was the first batch of the university, but out of, uh, I mean, we were not even 20% that way also, if I see. And five girls in, uh, among 150 students or so in the whole mathematical kind of a department. So uh, over the years, uh, there are many studies which are talking about that uh, women has a uh, wrong road sense. Uh, in the sense, they can't figure out the directions uh, or the, the figuring out the new roads or the places in a new place is very much gender biased or mathematical abilities is gender bias. And I always found that I may good at it. I'm good at finding the roads uh, to the extent that uh, when I was, uh, I've spent many years and uh, a lot of time in Europe, a number of uh, different countries and all with different languages. Once I was uh, doing my postdoctoral through European completion, there was another Indian uh, colleague with me. Uh, he was in a different school, 
I was in different school, but uh, I was with the school of management. He was with the school of economic, but we both were Indian. So of course you connect. So uh, we'll go together. We were in the same uh, working uh, hostel. I mean, it was uh, international researchers hostel of a university. So that's where I used to stay. Whenever we go out, invariantly throughout my stay for many months, Whenever we'll go to metro station while we'll coming, be coming out, he'll always ask, ma'am, where to go now? Left side or right side? This side or that side? You know, metro stations are always complicated, right? And every time I'll tell him, many a time I try to tell him the, uh, you know, uh, the, the major milestones. Okay, so this is the thing through which you can fight, figure out. And, but invariably, this is right. So the point is, this is a common belief and common research which has proved. So sometimes we want to test it. There will always be exceptions. So I find myself as an exception in most of the situation. And that's what my colleagues everywhere say that you are, you are uh, sometimes people even tell me that you are different than the normal Indian, which I agree because of my looks, because of my hair, because of my uh, perhaps eating habits or many such nature which happens. So that means whenever you have a hypothesis form, do not assume that that hypothesis will be 200%, right? But that's what exactly we need to test on our uh, data set. That's how we get the basis for our research. So uh, many of my PhD scholars or many of the people who come to inquire that what you need to be done on PhD level, I always tell them that you need to have a hypothesis and you always have a hypothesis. You always have an assumption. So if I say assumption, people immediately come back. If I say hypothesis, people think that it is a very scientific word and I have to put it in that way. Yes, you have to. But you have to test. Okay. Second is, uh, as we say, uh, you must have seen that in schools when you go and uh, try to give admission, try to get admission for your child, for your ward, for your nephews, niece or whatsoever. They usually ask, okay, so who is the parent? Whether they are working? And more often than not, you will find that if both the parents are working or they ask for education level, because we have a belief that if the parents will be educated, the children will perform better. Or whether you have prepared for coaching or not, on something on that way, right? So based on that assumption, this kind of a research has been done. So this kind of a data has come through that. The whole logic of telling you this whole story is so that you understand that how the data comes in. Okay, once you have done that, now you have to import the data. Now this second file, which I have given you, purposely I have not given you an Excel file. You can always convert a CSV file into Excel as you are aware, just save it as an Excel and that will save it as an, uh, instead of comma delimiter, right? In this case, it is comma delimiter. But I also want to show you that irrespective of the data, it will still work on SPSS. So I'll show you how it will work so once you will enter the data, you will get a window of this kind. I'll, I'll show you the, that part, but let me first clear some of these parts. You will get a very window, will, uh, window of this one. In this, again, you will have a variable and you will enter the variable. Now, in this case, whenever you have a scale variable, scale variables comes as covariates. And ordinal variables or nominal variables comes as factors. So keep in mind what is a factor and what is a covariate. So scale variables will always be a covariate. And then you're familiar with the standardization. So I'll take you to that side as well. Let me now open the file first. Okay. So let me go into SPSS and open. In open, when I'll click on follow the same, I'll just show you how to go about it. data. Now, when you go into data, I don't want a SPSS file. Now, this time I want a CSV file. So here is my text data or CSV file. So this is my student performance CSV data file. I click on open. Okay, 
the minute I click on open, it will open a window. What is this window is? This window will import your text data into a spaces format. So first thing, if you have a predefined format, for the time being, I don't have a predefined format. I just want this CSV file as it is. Sometimes you have to change some of the words. You can change. So I just simply let it remain as no by default and click on next. Okay. Here, the first question is, how are your variables arranged? So it is delimited for the time being for me. So I have a comma separator. So it is by default click on it. If I'm working on a text file, well, I have, I mean, if you are working on a, a paragraph, right, a text, normal text. So in that case, and you have a fix width, you can click on uh, fix width, align in columns as well. So uh, the point is that with the evolution of machine learning techniques, the SPSS software, which was earlier typically for statistical, is also now for neural networks or text files or social data analytics or data mining and all of these purposes. This software is mostly useful for the people who are looking for application and not interested much on writing the, the code again and again. So in R and Python also nowadays, a lot of codes are already available, okay? So for developer, R and Python are very useful. If you're not exactly into a developing mode, like I am, I am familiar with R and Python and not from today, from, but from uh, since my postdoctoral days. That was in 2010, almost 11 years now. But uh, I nowadays deal more with the application part of it because I am a consultant to the business houses. I'm a PhD guide and I'm a co-researcher. So I'm mostly interested in uh, analysis. So as a researcher, when you are trying to use, because as a faculty, you have to publish paper. So sometimes it's just good to use the existing data available. For that, what you need is a very clear cut, defined hypothesis in your How do you get the research idea? You get the research idea by looking at, by listening to the news, by looking around areas, by reading some of the papers. So anything can give you a new idea. Okay, can I test it? The minute you get, okay. So Dr. Shah said, I can test this data. I think, no, it's not important. I think, no, gender is not important. Or you think, okay, only parental education is not important. In my case, my sibling also helped. So can I take a sibling data? That gives you a new data idea. You just collect that kind of a data also, and then you just test it. Once you get the final output, you put it in your research paper, interpret it, and your research paper is ready. You don't need to write the codes to get published in a research paper. Right? So there are many ways in which direction you want to publish yourself. So hence, for the people who are into the application mode, this gives you a quick solution in that way. Quick, not easy. Remember, I'm not saying it's easy, I'm saying it's quick. Whether it is easy or not depends upon you. So you will have to see till what extent it works for you. So after that, once you are getting into that, Variable name into the, at the top of your file. In my case, yes. So variable names are included in the top, right? So I say next. Now, first case of data begins on which line number? It begins on two line number. So by default, it is there. Each line represents a case. That's true. A case means one pointer. Uh, as I said, one sample at a time. Okay. How many cases do you want to import? If you have, say, if you have 10,000 data and you want only 10, 1,000 data to be imported, you can do so. In our case, this file already have about 1,000 data or so. I want full of it. So I just click on next. I get here, okay? Here, which delimiter appears between variables? In my case, it's comma. So I say comma. By space, it is already there. The text qualifier, do I want any text qualifier? No, I don't have. So here is my data. I say next. What does it say? It says in where the variable names for this application have been found and changed. So the variable name, which does not suit SPSS, it is already changed as well. I said, okay, I don't have a problem. Variable name was gender, it has changed and data format is string. So here I have the liberty to change the formats 
of course the gender was written like female as you can see here i can go from pair to pair if i want to change certain things here i can do so right uh, i have mess score which is a numeric or if you don't want to do don't worry about it just click on okay because you already have an option to change it later you have successfully defined the format would you like to save this file format for future use for the time being i'm saying no would you like to paste the syntax i'm saying no i don't have a syntax for the timing and i just simply say okay finish what happened i got this file pasted all right i give you quick 5 minutes because it is already 10:30 and we need to do it so in quick 5 minutes you can also do the same thing all right just just simply go into this file csv and then quickly do it you have 5 minutes and in case you get a stuck let me know the process as i said is very simple go into the file go into open go into data and within the data define your types define your spf uh, which kind of a file data file you want to open and then just simply follow the instruction you'll be able to do it once you are done write yes so that we can go into the neural network Ashutosh ji, I have a time till eleven, right? Done. Could you import your CSV file? Hello. Ash Kush. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Eleven o'clock, na? Ah, uh, yes, ma'am. Yes. All right. ठीक है. I have thirty yes, minutes. I'll be able to come by that. Ah. All right. Most of you. So you are continuing, na? Ah. Huh? Yes. Yes. You are continuing right now. Yeah, I'm continuing. Or you have finished? Huh? Hello. People are asking for attendance list. I sometimes get worried when the people start asking for attendance list. I always think that the session is going a little boring or what. I hope it's not. I just want to wish that the session becomes interesting for you and very very useful. All right. So once you have this data, all right. Here is your data. What you have to do is go to analyze, and here you will find this neural link. All right. In neural network, you have both the uh, things. You have RBF and you have multi-layer procedure. Uh, you can choose either one, but uh, as we all know, and um, you will find it in literature that RBF uh, multi-layer works better than RBF. So I'll show you for our multi-layer because you and you can similar way find a lot of help everywhere to go about it. All right. and uh, in this now first thing you have to identify what is your dependent equity so to begin with i just want to take one score i can take maths score or reading score or writing score any anything whatever you prefer to have or i can take all the three also but initially i just want to show you certain aspects of it 
So let me just take one to begin with maths score. All right. Now, as I showed you earlier also, if your independent variables are scaled, then they'll go in covariate. If your independent variables are ordinal, oh, sorry, I, I just want to cancel it for a minute. I forgot to show you, check one thing, which was the variable. Okay. So first we have to check the variable. Now, what is the problem in the variable view here is it is showing everything as nominal, whereas we do not have it as a nominal. So our gender is ordinal. Gender can be nominal as well. So let me put the gender as nominal, no problem. You'll click here, you will get nominal. Okay. The rest of the variables are actually ordinal. The race is an ordinal variable. The education level is an ordinal variable. Whether the people have attempted the exam or not is ordinal. So I'm putting everything other than the gender as nominal. How do I realize this? I realized this when I was going into this. So once you have converted your variables, go into your neural network, multi-layer perceptron action, as I said. Let me say we are going for maths score. Okay. And since my variables starting from this to this, see what happens is I pick one and I can click on this arrow to send it here. But since I have many, I'll just pick one. I'll press control and shift simultaneously and click the last one. So what happens, it picks the, it selects all the variables together to save your time. Now, all of these variables, my independent variables are nominal or ordinal. So it will go into the factors. I repeat, please note it somewhere that your ordinal or nominal variables will be factor. Your scale variables will be covariant. So I also had a file of online uh, purchasing and an online purchasing the file was uh, again taken from Kaggle it's available there and it's a very interesting file which they have uh, taken from Google Analytics but I thought this works faster now second is the rescaling of covariates okay you have to rescale the covariates which you have heard from many professors till now that we have to convert it into uh, standardized form or normalized form so here also you have the similar the, the reason is very simple uh, because the different units, different variables may have different kind of units. So if you are checking, let's say, automobile sector and you are talking about the mileage, okay, and on one side you have engine's capacity and on another side you have uh, mileage, uh, uh, the petrol to cover one uh, or the distance covered in one liter of petrol. You also have which country of origin the car is, how many cylinders are there in the car, electric or petrol or diesel, the kind of fuel used. So in that kind of a situation, it becomes different. So it's very important to standardize or normalize. If you want to see what is the difference between these, uh, you have a very simple, sorry. Yeah. So you have the very simple uh, way to check it you have the option here on health. If you click on health, it will tell you what kind of, what is the difference between standardized, uh, uh, normalized or adjusted normalized, okay? For the time being, I'll click on normalize. Uh, more often than not, we say click on adjusted normalized. In my case, it's all categorical. I don't need exactly the adjusted normalized that way. Or uh, I don't need uh, it in that way at all if I see this, but any, okay? So I'll just show you, I'll click on help and then you will get the help menu is getting open, okay? So I already have this window with me, I'll show you. Now here you can see in this help menu, it shows you everything on this uh, one. So here you can see it is about multi-layer perceptron. So at any point in time, the best way, since you all belong to computer science background, the best way you know is to learn any software is to go its help menu. So the similar way, you can go to radial basis function if you require. Now, if you see the standardize, the standardize is, uh, which we used to call as normal uh, variate, right? X minus mean upon standard deviation. 
when you want to convert it into normalized, we say only this is not going to work. It has to come in terms of uh, x minus minimum upon mix, uh, maximum minus minimum. So what happens in this case is your window comes as uh, minus one and uh, between zero and minus one. So you remember that we say the normal values, normal value is usually defined as n zero one, right? If you want to get into the adjusted variable, the value, the formula changes, of course, and it becomes um, from minus one to plus one. Okay. So in any of the situations, you can go for this. And if you want to have an understanding about nominal, ordinal, etc., as well, you can have that. Coming back to this, I just click on a standardize. Okay, that's not on. Okay, so why it's not on? So, okay, I wanted to show you some of these things as well. Now, in this, along with this, there are many windows available here. So, it's a good idea to go into all those windows and see what these windows are doing for us, okay? So I'll go to partition. You have understood that we need a training data and we need a, so first one was variable. Then I go to partition. So it by default, it takes 70% at testing and 30% as training. If you want to change, you have the option to change the partition variable. I don't want to change for the time being. I'll stick with the 70 and 30% is a good ratio for me for the beginning. Now, coming to architecture. So in architecture, you may have one layer, hidden layer. You may have many hidden layers. So if you want to have more hidden layers, now here is a uh, limitation of SPSS. It can allow you only one or two hidden layers. And uh, you know, in machine language, we say it's like a black box, right? You, you don't know what is happening inside this, but there is an option. Along with this, then you have an option that how many custom points you want. So say, for example, the nodes, right? Uh, what is the nodes? Nodes are, as I show you here, uh, by talking about the neural network, I showed you this picture, right? Begin with the neural network where is the picture gone? Yeah, this one. So here is just one layer, but it may have two hidden layers. It may have 10 hidden layers as well. So if you want to have how many hidden layers and then nodes. So here in this case, as I showed you, one, two, three, four, five nodes. So you can also define how many nodes you want through this. So if you want, let's say, four nodes in layer one and 10 nodes in layer two, you can define so. Or uh, yesterday, uh, Representative Nagilai was telling you about uh, optimization, etc. that also. So for the time being, I don't want to get into this. I'm just getting into automatic architecture design. So by automatic, it takes only one hidden layer. Now it is minimum layers one and maximum. I mean, I'm saying, okay, automatically, I can even say, okay, don't make it more than 20. I can say more than by 50 is default, all right? I set in this or you can just simply leave it as it is. If you are insistent on checking two layers, then First time, click on one layer, then go on second layer, then go on third layer, and then check it. And you have to test, train the data. So for training the data, you have the option to go for batch method, online method, or minimum batch method. So if you're going for minimum batch, you have to define whether you are going for automatic computing or custom. For the time being, I'm saying, okay, batch method is just good. Uh, now, here comes the gradient descent. Yesterday, uh, again, we were showing you a curve, right? Where there was a, a curvature where he showed you that what is the gradient curvature method or scaled conjugate gradient. Here, you have the option to go for either one. And you can even change the values if you know it. So initially, when you are the beginner one, 
just go by whatever is the by default value and later on you can change it once you have practiced now coming to output i two are already clicked but i am also interested in synaptic weights okay i want it to give me predicted by observed chart residue i also want it to give me independent variable important analysis that how each variable is important for defining the whole c now same as you know it gives you the option that if you want to say obviously you would like to say so you can say it will increase the three variables in your final if you have to export anything for the timing i don't have to but you can always export the synaptic grid if you have from other options okay similar why if you have a missing data you can have a missing value treatment as well i don't have any so i'll just remain there and i say okay so what happens now i get this multi layer perceptron let's have a look at it so first table this or do you want to try it once yourself or should i explain what it all does all right let me explain it then in the interest of time uh so i'll uh we know ji saying please let him describe map so uh describe the solution or the method i mean do you want me to explain how i reached here again we know ji solution okay. all right so let me explain the solution in the interest of time let's see the solution first so in this case the training data was 694 70% reset so roughly about 69.4 and 306 became your uh, testing data all right all cases are valid and there was no missing way now let's go to the next step it is about network information that you have five layers number of units number of hidden layers was one number of units in hidden layer was found eight all right now if you see this you can see a whole set of a diagram here so in this you can see that it has taken the first variable the first one is this bias okay it's a bias and input then it is gender because gender has only two male and female then it is going for the next variable which is ethnic group so it has taken all your ethnic groups which was seven ethnic groups in that particular variable then the next variable which was education level of the parents which has all those numbers etc so here you can see all your input variables now here it is output variable sorry it is nodes now in this node all these arrows are your synaptics now you can see that some are as dark as this the thick one some are little thinner and some are absolutely dull okay what does it indicate it indicates this thicker one are the most important synaptics these are the most important relationship for example from gender male to h11 it is important and very important okay the same wise you can see in output also so this h11 is having a very strong relation same simultaneously this h18 right you can see all those colors so this arrow and this arrow is very dark and impactful that means this is very strong one one Two and three and four are a little dull, and these two H one six and H one seven is absolutely dull. So that means they have a very small impact for the same. So once you check the synaptic level, now you have to see the weights. So here comes your model sum. So it says this is the relative error, which is becoming point seven four six, which is uh, comparatively higher. Now here are your weights. can see that 
This is 0 0.098, which is very small. This is bias, the one, the first one, the each nodes. And then comes the other ones. So which are potentially higher, you can see the signs itself, it's number itself. So it is minus 0.519, the uh, group E ethnicity, it's a higher number. But of course, on a negative side, that means that it might be affecting it in a reverse direction, but it's high. If you see 0 0.043, it's a very small one. And hence those, based on these numbers, the votes are getting impacted. So usually lesser than 0.3 is a, a, a very weak. Above 0.67 is considered as a strong or very strong above 0.7. So that way it gives you all those synaptic weights. So you can see these numbers, which are for both inputs and outputs. Okay. Now here it's also, sorry. Just a minute. Yeah. Here it also gives you the weights for this output, right? Comes the this graph. This is what this is predicted value with the maths score. Now you can see that there is no fixed relationship coming in. If I want to see, I mean, this is not a linear. This looks like very scattered one. I'm not very sure if they have a uh, shape. So I want to check. So the minute you will double click you will get a window like this. Okay. In this window, I click on here and it gives me, you can see that R square has suddenly appeared. So it's a linear line and it's R square is shown as 0.255. Another window which this property appears. So if you're not sure, it's a linear one and you want to check whether it is a cubic one, you can click on cubic. If you think that it's a quadratic, you can click. If you are not sure what kind of a curve, it has a very irregular kind of a curve, you can click on this LOES. And here you have all kinds of ways to pick the uh, shape. So if I say it's a Gaussian, so it will check it on a Gaussian curve. You must have done it on a numerical analysis, right? Uniform curve, or if you feel that it's a, a tri weight curve, accordingly, you can check. For the time being, though I know that it's not linear or it's not quadratic, uh, it doesn't look like linear at least, I want to click on cubic. And I'm not very sure whether it is cubic or not. I also want it to give me a confidence interval of 95 and apply. So what happens is, the minute I write it, you can see that it is saying now R square is for cubic, but the value is 0.255. It also gives you, by clicking on any of these values, you can check whatever change you want in the graph. I mean, if you want the x-axis uh, things to appear, y-axis uh, information to appear, there are all these windows. You even have an option that if you want the equation to be represented here, or if you want to change the color of this, okay? If you want to change the size, the variables, if you want the line to be represented, variables to be represented, chart size to be changed, any and every option is available. You just have to double click. Once you have done, just click, come back to the main graph. So it is showing you, this is 95% above, 95% below. Anything which goes beyond this 95% are actually your outliers. So you can see these, some of these numbers are your outliers. And hence you are unable to see the full shape of this. Another kind of things which will come again. Now this is with predicted value with the residual. So residual is also becoming very uh, scattered, very bad. If you want to see the importance of different kind of curve, now here is the gender. It says gender has 0.115 importance. Okay, so total sum of this will be 100%. So gender 0.115, uh, ethnicity of the parents 0.262, parental education is 0.211, whether they are taking lunch or uh, surviving on substitute, I, I mean subsidized food, that is uh, in some ways, the because in Europe and uh, US, they are very conscious about uh, the privacy issue, so they do not reveal whether you are poor or middle class or this or that. The parameter is whether you are taking a subsidized food or normal food. And that way you can see that you can see this whole situation, okay? 
this is the normalized importance of it. So that way, and uh, mind it, uh, I forgot to tell you at any point in time, at any point in time, you can just simply click on this window and simply copy it. If you want to copy it as a picture, you click on copy spatial and click on as a picture. If you want to click it on a pick paste and you can simply copy it and paste it in your Word file or in your PPT. So if you are preparing for conference presentation, you, as I did uh, in your spaces regression, I just simply copied it on, pasted it on my uh, PPT to show it in the class. When I write a paper, I pick the solution from here and then whatever change I want to do. So if I want to make some changes in the table, the way it is presented, I copy it as a normal table form. If I just want that this curve is just good enough, I paste it as a picture form and paste it back, right? That way you will be able to do it. Now, I'm not happy with this curve because this was just showing one. So let me in next five minutes, quickly show you it same, but now I want to do it for both reading and writing scale. And mind it, now you can see another variable also here, right? Which was predicted value for more math score. So this because I saved the final data. Again, if you think that some of uh, uh, the variables doesn't affect it, as I told you in multiple regression, you keep on adding and deleting the variables to see whether it is making some sense for you or not. Second change, which I want to do is, I want it to be adjusted normalized skills, okay? Partitions are fine. My architecture, I'm still going for automatic architecture. And if you think 10 is too much, eight is too much, you can't read, you can still uh, reduce it. Uh, it's okay to go online. I just want to make a change. Or, okay, let me go for batch again. So that, and we want all of this, everything remain to be same. Just want to see, for all three variables and how it affects, okay? Now, in this case, you can see here, now, here, it is showing you three variables, math score, this, and the variables which are affecting it. The rule remains same, the input remains same, the hidden layer is one. If you see some of the square errors is 770, Average over, overall relative error is 0 0.741. And out of these, the writing score has the least for scale dependence. All right. This is for training time. And training time is 36 seconds in this case. Now, this training time depends upon your individual machine as well. So I have i7 machine with 8 uh, MB of RAM. So it took a little less time. And of course, the data was only 1,000 data right now. Sometimes it takes uh, more time and you can change the time till the system should work. Some of the square error SSC, which you understood last time is 38. Average relative error is 75. Okay, reading scores and so error still looks a little higher. So perhaps next I should go for uh, two layers and something on that. Line. This is the way as you can see, this is the scores. Now you can see this is for reading this is for writing. So for all three variables, it showed you on a different curve. If you see it as a gender weights, now you can see that the weights of your independent variable has changed compared to the previous case. Okay. A quick uh, one minute, but meanwhile, if you have questions, I want to just show to you for two layers. So I'm okay with two. I'm saying automatically compute, but give me two layers and give me okay. It will do the rest of the things for us. In two layers, you can see the difference here. So now here, there is the first layer, there is a second layer. There is a bias which affects and it affects the scores. Now you can see that math score is much more dependent on the risk because it is becoming much more prominent for you. The same wise, you can check your other scores here, it is your weights, 
Now, when you copy the squared table, don't copy the full table. Only show whatever weights you find relevant for showing in your, your research. If you check this, your weights has changed. Now, the gender is less effective and parental education is more effective. Lunch doesn't affect it to that extent. Preparation for the course is affecting it and so on and so forth. All right. So, once you do it, you will find that, as I said, on this line, then you will find the sample and staining data, network analysis, all right? So, keep in mind that there are many, many opportunities. Just figure out a better way to do it so that your research and your teaching and you as an individual make a better work. Any question, I feel happy to answer. Otherwise, thank you from my side. You're most welcome for the question. Sandeep ji, I took exactly 10.59 dot on time for you. Over to you if there is no question. And if there are questions, they are I'll be happy to help you. Uh, I'm writing my mail ID here on the chat box as well. You can any point in time contact me if you want to uh, carry on uh, some research with me, if you want to collaborate, if you just want some guidance, anything, most welcome. Happy to help. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. Uh, really, this lesson is wonderful. And once again, thank you for the wonderful session and lecture. Really, you have covered all the area of SPSS, regression analysis, ANN, how to work on SPSS, how to, you have demonstrated how to deal with ANN and re regression analysis. Really great lecture, ma'am. So thank you again for such a nice presentation, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so very so, much, Dr. Um, Ashutosh. And thank you very much for uh, inviting me for the session. I'm so thankful mm. for all the participants to bearing me for last two hours. Yes. Uh, thank you. Continuously, you have taken uh, since last two hours. And uh, actually, in this uh, whole FDT, we have many theoretical lectures, many practical demonstration on the lectures. So really, uh, it's very uh, wonderful lecture, ma'am. Thank, thank you. you once again, ma'am. Dr. So Siddharth has maybe... written, sorry, Ashtosh for interruption. Dr. Siddharth, uh, yes, you can send me a mail or uh, contact me separately. We'll discuss it. Yeah, over to you, Ashtosh. Thank you. So I request all the participants, if uh, you have any queries, then you can directly contact uh, Mrani, ma'am. So I think ma'am has given uh, her mail ID on chat box. So uh, surely it will help you. So, so thank you again, ma'am. Uh, thank you, Ashtosh. And I'll be sending the PPT uh, to you immediately. And you okay, can okay, forward okay. it to the uh, class. Thank you very much. I think I can log out, right? Uh, 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 okay. Thank you. So thank you, everybody. Uh, Have a very good thank day. You, thank you, ma'am. Uh, thank you, ma'am. So before starting next session, uh, the expert of the next session is in the link. And... So before starting the next session, I uh, I have some information and uh, which I have to share to our participant. Uh, uh, first of all, um, many times uh, I'm very thankful to my uh, my participant and I salute them and for their patience listening on uh, on this uh, five day long. FDP and many times I could not able to reply on WhatsApp group due to my busyness in the FDP. Uh, but Dr. Gopal is working in the background and I hope he is replying all the participants. Uh, Dr. Gopal is very dedicated and hardworking uh, professor of uh, this university. Uh, and if you have any problem, then you can directly contact me. 
after this uh, FDP, and uh, I will try to resolve them. And again, I also request all the participants. Uh, if you have attended the FDP and sometime due to some reason, due to some technical problem, if you are not, you, if you have not filled the attendance or, or you didn't got the link of uh, attendance or uh, feedback form, then don't worry about the attendance because we are taking uh, attendance through Zoom link also. So we will cross check it and uh, surely we will give you the attendance if you are present in the session. So don't worry about that. Uh, and one more information immediately after the second session, the quiz will start. Uh, and its maximum time is 45 minutes and we will give you one attempt only. And 25 questions are there. So you have to fill it within uh, you have to reply it within 45 minutes. So we will send the link on WhatsApp group. So you have to uh, reply within 45 minutes and then uh, we will start the concluding session. So uh, now, uh, Professor Goa, Grover sir is connected with this link. So I welcome Professor Grover sir. And sir, welcome to you in this uh, 14th day, fourth, fifth day session, fifth day, 14th session of this FDP on advances of artificial intelligence and machine learning in societal development. And then topic of Professor Grover sir, AI for social welfare and progress. Professor E.S. Grover has been professor, dean, director, and head of the computer science department at Delhi University, director general of GGS Indrapas University, Delhi, campus director of KIIT group of college, Maharshi Dayanand University, Gurgaon, with over 40 years of teaching, research, and industry experience. His area of research interest are software engineering, quality assurance, quantum computing, and information processing, outcome-based education, and quality aspects in higher education. He has published over 150 research papers in international referred journals, conferences, IEEE, ACM, Journal of Object Technology, Software Engineering, and others. He has been regular consultant to the software industry like Tata Consultancy Services, ISS Infotech, DCM Technology, SYS Design, etc. He is active coordinator to quality assurance and accreditation scheme of NBA, NAC, NILIT as an expert assessor and mentor to various institutions. Professor Grover has been vice president of CSI and Chairman Indian Science Congress, Computer Science and Information Technology. He is fellow CSI IETE, member IST, Quality Council of India, ACM and IEEE USA. He was awarded the prestigious recognition of being among the top 50 educational innovative leaders in the country by World Innovative Congress 2019. So I again welcome Professor Grover, sir. Sir, please, we have given you right of sharing screen and you, now you are co-host. So over to Professor Grover, sir. Thank you, Professor Rashtesh. Uh, good morning, everybody. I am really thankful to you, Professor Pant and your team for inviting me to this FPP and deliver a lecture on AI for social good. I am really 
privilege of discussion of important new field which is coming up very fast now ashutos is it visible is my screen visible yes yeah, it's visible sir yes sir your screen is visible sir i am uh, audible also properly yes sir properly okay then i'll show kar dijiye then i can slide i i will make it slide show then we can start okay. right yes sir yes sir okay perfect sir yes please yes please perfect sir okay thank you once again participant thank you very much for being a part of this very important fdp being organized by professor pan professor ashutosh and his colleagues now ai is a topic which is an integral component of any computer science program but when it comes to developing applications and the role it plays in the welfare of humanity society many aspects come for us so what we will be discussing is how the artificial intelligence is improving the quality of life all over the world among humanity what are the possible future prospects where we can work we can contribute to the welfare of humanity now the immediately question will come what is social good social welfare social good what is this because it is a completely new field social good implies a positive impact on individuals or society in general of whatever we do we are we are in the computer field there are so many issues with humanity where computer is being applied so social good is something that benefits the largest number of people in the largest possible way example could be example having clean air clean water health care literacy education and so on see any improvement in health care at one place gives its benefit to anybody anywhere in the world so it's say global issue of global benefit is not confined to one country or one place so many techniques of cleaning water we know that water is becoming scarce it's there are dirty water so many things so today social good is about getting people to engage in pro social actions that benefit society often by harnessing the power of technology and social media we all know how social media has become so powerful now what kind of technologies have come up forward we are able to develop them so it is about engagement shareability and bringing people together to change the world for the better that means removing hunger what are the techniques how to predict see earlier governments multinational large and jews were the only institution with the reach and resources to take initiatives for any change interesting earlier the government and multi they are a big organization they have uh, you know billions of billions of dollar at their disposal it is they who used to take action how to improve health care how to improve education system they used to contribute they you give the feedback now just look at twitter facebook and instagram now we have these tools 
where we can give our own opinion. A single human being can give its opinion. It was never the case in history. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram are tools that can be used to engage people in social good actions. For example, forming an online group to help poor people. Forming online groups to deliver information. In fact, they, these, in, these media, these allow people to share ideas, advocate and fund, fundraise to solve pressing societal issues. Through online platforms and communities, individuals can add their voice to a cause more easily than ever before and feel like they are agent of change. Please appreciate this thing. This is something that the individuals have the now the power. Individuals have the control of contributing to something which is of general good which may be of societal good, which may be of national good, which may be of international good. A very important change has come about. Then, when I say it's not a localized thinking of applying AI for social good, it's not a localized thinking. It's not a one place. In fact, AI for social good is a relatively new research field. It's a very powerful research field wherein there is the intersection of AI, artificial intelligence, and a number of other fields. Fields from social sciences, medical sciences, hard sciences, and so on. All these sciences, they come together and focus on taking, tackling social, environmental and public health challenges that exist today using AI. Which means it is not only computer science or AI which is contributing to this, but all fields I would say are contributing towards creating welfare environment for everybody in the world. This has been recognized by UN also. And you are now for sustained development, which is very important. That means whatever we do should be applicable for years and years to come. UNO has taken art is taking great interest in applying AI for social causes, such as they have come up with with the goal, with the aim no poverty in the world, zero hunger, good health and well-being for all, quality education, gender equality, no differentiation between human being whether male or female, equal opportunities, clean water and sanitation, decent work and economic growth and so on. That means AI for special good, UNO has identified those areas where when AI is applied, it will lead to welfare of humanity all over the globe. Now what is the relevance of AI in this context? You know, you have been having a lot of lectures, a lot of discussions, by earlier esteemed speakers. I will just mention those points which are relevant to my session. For example, artificial, what is the artificial intelligence? Artificial intelligence is a science devoted to making machine think and act like humans. What is intelligence? The capability of interpretation, the capability of drawing inferences, the capability of forecasting and so on. This is what human brain possesses. That's why we say human intelligence. Now these actions are being ported or being implemented by computers. Now artificial intelligence science, they were making machines, computers think and act like humans. 
Artificial intelligence is the study of how to make computers do things that people do or would do better. Understand real life intractable problems and suggest likely solutions. That means the computer should be able to appreciate and understand what are the real life problems and then support, propose or suggest what are the likely solutions. We see here the, the, the way we are building, we are trying to build, use computers as intelligent machines. Human beings solve complex problems and issues, which may be individual, societal or global. The problem that we have may be digital also, maybe medical problem, it was societal, maybe pollution problem, it was global, maybe climate change problem. So human beings are facing these complex problems at various levels. Now, AI is contributing towards solving these problems. For example, AI is contributing human conveniences like with the help of robots or productivity automatic tools, productivity tools, indicating that we use tools based on maybe hardware or software based on the on the paradigms of artificial intelligence to make our life efficient, useful and good. Now if you use if used optimally I can enhance human rights increase shared prosperity and create a better future for all. But the question is, how to do all this? How, how can this all be done? Now, this means we need to understand what are the relevance, relevant technologies when, when clubbed together with the AI paradigm can help us to create environment, can help us to create applications which are useful for mankind, which contribute to the wel welfare of mankind. So there are several AI capabilities such as computer vision. They normally are in the categories of new computer vision, natural language processing, deep learning techniques are especially applicable to a wide range of societal challenges in various sectors. As for example, AI capabilities are pertinent to all domains may be health and hunger, education, security and justice, environment and pollution management, where the usage frequency is high and large population would be affected. In health, for example, AI enabled wearable devices. You know, wearable devices are so common now, I should just mention in the going, which can detect potential early signs of diabetes through heart rate sensor data and contribute to its prediction and treatment. Now, Now, in education, there are billions of students could benefit from application of adaptive learning technology. That means technology is such that it is used according to the need of the learner. Addressing the needs of the learner, its ability, how I design my curriculum, how I design my delivery system, how I assess it, that means adaptive learning technology. This is possible to implement with the help of AI. Now above capabilities like to put computer vision, natural language processing and deep learning are good at recognizing patterns from the types of data they use. You know that data has, whatever data we may take, 
there will be some kind of patterns there will be some kind of commonalities so these are good at recognizing patterns from the types of data they use particular big data and you know big data is the is a research topic of the day lot of lot of efforts are being devoted to this just a minute please hello hmm so that means these capabilities are very good in analyzing the data big data which is unstructured unstructured in the sense the big data will have images videos text spatial data all kind of data they are present in a big data paradigm now how to use this data to make sense now this is possible because when i say ai and social good then ai contributes all sectors human activity in different fields agriculture commerce education environment medical commercial entertainment and so on i would say if you think of the field i will tell you how ai can be used there how ai can contribute there now, here are some examples which are quite common forecasting weather flood weather floods and earthquakes we couldn't have done so so accurate prediction of the earthquakes or floods or tsunami without the help of ai so monitoring marine life you know that marine life that is fishes crocodiles how they are being affected by the change of the environment through let's say plastic dumping in the sea and so on how can i no human being can think they 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 may think but no human being can implement that we we no one can come out with this thing so detecting plant diseases there are thousands of plant diseases wildlife conservation predicting disease like covid 19 all of you are familiar how covid 19 is being predicted this prediction may be off by maybe 20% 30% but it is better than not having it so professing wildfires you know in california there is a huge wild, wild uh, fire going on it was predicted similar in australia then advancing education then fill in the gaps and so on thus indicating that ai application in these will lead to good of everyone in this thing now technology is contributing to social welfare programs are robotics natural language recognition natural language generation computer vision speech recognition speech generation games entertainment and so on now see here you are all familiar with these tools For example blood pressure mirroring washing machine digital watches oximeter oximeter being a very very famous i would say rather notorious during the second covid wave so ai has acted as the main impetus of emerging technologies they are all based on the paradigms of ai like big data robotics and iot and it will continue to act as a technological innovator for the coming future it is not going to be changed now just to give you an idea that this big data that's the data which is in the in the in the, in the terabyte petabyte zettabytes which are in the tens of power uh, 15 16 bytes if that data and that's also a very very heterogeneous data then how i can use this data because all interpretations all activities of providing help other depends upon the type of data we have the type of environment so we we take we would say it, we have traditional ai and applied ai traditional artificial intelligence 
system which is not intended to match or exceed the capabilities of human beings. It, it is like that, but it may not be equal to that. It may not be more than that. You are all familiar with the expert systems, knowledge-based systems. Then second is applied AI. Applied intelligence that matches or exceeds human intelligence. Please appreciate this thing. Intelligence that exceeds human intelligence. The intelligence of a machine that can successfully perform cognitive tasks. Cognitive task is task, mental tasks that a human being can. So, art, intel, artificial, this will be just, just a matter of convenience and the techniques we use that. So, applied AI tries to match or enhance performance compared to human intelligence. So, an ability to perform general intelligent action Applied AI is associated with human traits such as consciousness, self-aware, emotion interpretation and so on. So for convenience, we have traditional AI. I would be focusing on applied AI because most of the areas which I have mentioned for AI applications, they are involve those things. Now, AI can be used for two purposes. That is use of computer power to augment human thinking, just as we use motor to augment human or horse power. Right? This augment, enhance. Next is, example for this is robotics and sport systems, very knowledge based systems are its major applications. Use of computer intelligence, intelligence, capability to understand how human brain think. Please see, that was the argument of this thing. Now, this issue is how the human brain think. It's a big change. And the artificial intelligence provider the, has the capability to understand how human brain think. When we test our computer program, not merely what they can do, please see here. When we test computer program written using AI paradigms, not only merely what they can do, but how they will do it. See, from the moment you bring in the word how, the intellectual or the mental aspects start coming in. So, just to recall, expert systems is a computer program developed using artificial intelligence that aims to capture knowledge of human experts to support decision making and learning, not interpreting. Then we may write a expert system which have that capability, but to a limited extent, because the techniques and algorithm we use for knowledge based system, which have been using so far, do not have the capability of processing heterogeneous large amount of data. Now system then code expert knowledge as rules and are referred to as rule based system. We are all familiar with this. Rule based system involves the use of knowledge bases, inference engine and programming language in this per program. Now knowledge based systems, they, what they involve the real world problem, say medical diagnosis we carry out the analysis of the problem then we design the rules if then else rules now then we design the reasoning system based on the logic and that leads to solution so kbs serve as a useful tool to help organizations to solve problem which may which are difficult in making decisions in in learning and so on which is again useful for human good because they have, for example, when they are used in the medical world, they help us to diagnose diseases, a useful entity, which whether it whether is done in India or in Ethiopia or in England, we have this tool to do this. Thing. This is our social good. Then 
expert domain system used in so many domains domains like camera in design manufacturing design domain medical domain diagnostic system to deduce the cause of disease from observed data conduct of medical operations of human being monitoring system comparing data continuously with observed systems process control systems controlling physical processes based on monitoring knowledge domain finding faults in vehicles and all computer and uh, detection of possible flaws and so on these are the applications which are relatively simple they are let's say yeah, as we say they they, they are they, they do not involve many of the aspects of thinking they are routine time now if we look at cognitive ability how to bring in the cognitive ability thinking ability in our applications along with ai paradigm now the areas which are ability based are computer vision natural language recognition natural language generation speech recognition speech generation and so on the many of the ideas we de uh, deployed in variety of ai application which contribute to social welfare via robots cobots chat box software agents and so on that means these technologies enable to build those aspects different aspects which are supported by artificial which, which carry out the artificial kind of activity are possible to this thing now let us see we have been using robots robots are good for species the robots are used for they serve the purpose of social good they are used in homes the robots are being increasing deployed at several places such as airports shopping malls care centers and even homes and using and use human using human or animal like social technique to work with people that means mundane work you are all aware of this i am saying this that is also social good that is also social good and robots contribute to that now some robots even robots even handle social situations or are designed specifically for emotional response for example comforting a person researchers are developing robots for social good that can contribute to positive social changes for socio political issue for example why why we why we age can we slow down our aging system feminism homelessness environmental issue there such kind of robot they are known as social robots social robots robots are doing a lot of good to the welfare of humanity also though in a relatively simple comparatively simple to handle simple problems you are all familiar with this when they give robots in hospital industry how they are doing if robots can walk robot can turn around robots can go up the stairs so they robots are there to greet guests do housekeeping clean floor perform room surveys act as waiter in the restaurant do cooking and so on now some of the participants may say sir this will lead to unemployment we will not will talk about this only at the end these are the things for example cleaning cleaning floors why should a uh, why not have it automated why in, in greeting we can we know that there is no human touch agreed but these are the there are many activities which are with they kill your let's say they kill your intelligence they they kill your emotions and so on so they can supplement of our activities thus relieving us from many mundane work leading to welfare of a large number of people have a look here see in india we may not have be having many of these robots otherwise there are robots which which clean the windows there are robots which uh, sweep the floors there are robots which uh, you know clean the swimming pools 
Now cleaning swimming pool is not an easy thing, but robots do that. There are robots, vacuum cleaners, there are lawn mowers, and so on. The point I am trying to highlight is robots, which are IT based tools, now are contributing to the social welfare of human being in a big way also. Now cobots, you know, uh, cobots are now known as collaborative uh, robots. They can help workers to do the mundane work, relieve them and relax them and so on. By the way, you may be, you many of you may be knowing, in the West thought is going out, why not have a working day of four days a week? Why have five days a week? There is a thought already going on. That is because the for the rest of the, the work which can be done by the robot for the welfare of workers should be got done by them and what and the uh, workers should be given relief so that they can devote time for their self care, family care and like this. In the chatbot, see a chatbot, a computer program is an artificial intelligence application that can imitate a real conversation with the user in their natural language. How many of you can immediately recall that you are using rope chatbots? Chatbots enable communication via text or audio on websites, messaging application, mobile apps or telephone and can be embedded in any social media application. So chatbots are programmed which responds to your queries. Which take your question, respond it. Which prompts you to look at those things which may be of interest to you. So chatbots are often integrated in dialogue systems for various practical purposes such as online help, personalized service, or information acquisition, and so on. See, some chatbots use sophisticated natural language processing systems. For example, Microsoft Cortina, Amazon Alexa, Apple Siri, you know, they come out with suggestions, they come out with completing the letter you are writing, they come out with many of things which we might not have, we might be aware of this, but may not be, a, we may not be thinking at that particular moment. So these are the chatbots based on AI paradigm which contribute to the relief of human being. They are same whether you are in Singapore, whether you are in Mauritius, whether you are in India. So look how they are contributing here to the welfare. Then chatbots and social good. Chatbot applications are being used for social good. Now see here, UN, UNO is also using chatbots. Chatbot used by the UN United Nations to collect survey information via Facebook Messenger with the goal of amplifying people's opinion to improve the lives of young people around the world. Now it's a felt young see may, senior person may not be that vocal. Young people are very vocal. They want to be heard. They say what we think, why don't you hear us? So UNO, which is an international body has wants that the voice of young people, opinion of the youth must also be known and, and acted upon as much as possible. So the chatbot for social, so see when let us say millions of students, millions of young people are being benefited, that is what again is beneficial maybe in various forms, that is again is social group. So, for example, so the UNO has chatbots which provide legal help to refugees. See, when a refugee goes, let us say in the present case, Afghan refugees, they go to, let us say, Canada. They don't know English. They, how do you, how do they manage it? Now, see, same uh, type of refugees go to Germany. Same type of refugees may come to India. So, they may need some legal help, legal advice. So chatbot can do that. So UNO has that. Then giving legal assistance to people who unjustly got parking tickets. 
कई बार क्या होता है हमारा बिना वजह के चलान हो जाता है तो उस केस में चैटबॉट विल प्रोवाइड अस द गाइडलाइंस इट विल हेल्प अस वेयर वेंट वी रॉन्ग वेयर वी डिड नॉट कनेक्टिंग पीपल टू एड प्रोवाइडिंग ऑर्गेनाइजेशन बेस्ड ऑन देयर इंटरेस्ट एंड प्रेफरेंसेस अंडरस्टैंडिंग द इम्पैक्ट ऑफ ड्राउट्स ऑन ए कंट्री लेट अस से अनफॉर्चुनेटली इफ देयर इज अ ड्राउट इन एनी कंट्री हाउ विल पीपल नो अबाउट इट हाउ विल पीपल अंडरस्टैंड अबाउट इट सो चैट बॉट्स विल डू दैट similarly now these are the they, why i am giving this thing i am giving you this thing because these chat bots which are internationally adopted let's say robots like say who bot you it is a chat bot where give you medical aid 24 by 7 ab to ye hamare yahan bhi shuru ho gaya hoga lekin we are using not our own design chatbots maybe one or two there are i talk about them also but mostly they are designed by the major companies quit xt helping user quit smoking media bot med mediate bot creating a daily mediate meditation habit prompting people to go for voting get a free legal help and your voice matters you report the chat bot thus they are contributing to social welfare through these apps here just to give you an idea chat bot you report your voice matters across the world young people are concerned about a variety of issues ranging from climate change to the economy unicef created its own bot you report to give them a voice the bot available via twitter and facebook messenger polls its followers called you reporters on a range of topics for example youth is concerned about climate change youth may be concerned about the poverty among the children let's say the exploitation of the children now uno says why should we not hear them so this you report is that here idea is to gather opinion and experiences from these young participants whose number is in millions and use them to help influence public policy earlier the voice of the youth was not heard we will always say election age is 18 years about 17 and a half us us bachche ki bhi achhi opinion ho sakti hai how about a child who is only 12 years old uski opinion bhi achhi ho sakti hai so you report is a chat bot which unicef uno has designed to collect the opinion of various groups of persons for their welfare then then there are what are known as software intelligent agents which are again known bots see anything that can be viewed as interacting recognizing its environment apne property agent se jante hain aap प्रॉपर्टी एजेंट क्या करता है वो जो प्रॉपर्टी ओनर्स होते हैं उससे इंटरेक्ट करता है उनका डेटा अपने पास रखता है उसको कस्टमर से मिलाता है और एंड सो मैनी थिंग्स द सेम कॉन्सेप्ट हैज बीन इम्प्लीमेंटेड इन द फील्ड ऑफ कंप्यूटर साइंस यूजिंग पैराडाइम्स ऑफ आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस सो दैट दैट इज कॉल्ड एज सॉफ्टवेयर इंटेलिजेंट एजेंट्स एनी थिंग दैट कैन बी व्यूड एज इंटरेक्टिंग recognizing its environment collecting data and acting upon that information according to defined protocol to achieve its goal is an agent many of you may be familiar with this but here i am looking at the agent from the public good point of view from the common welfare of humanity the agents in fact this this may be in in, in your Uh, AI uh, curriculum also. Agents and multi-agents play a major role in artificial intelligence systems. Agents can be viewed as software system which perform intelligent action which are traditionally done by the humans. They are a, 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 a agent. These software agents are computer programs written by us. My students have written many of these. 
Agents do not, they do not only make intelligent logical conclusion, but they use their abilities also to take initiatives, to communicate and have certain kind of other activities. Now, intelligent software agents for social good are increasingly being deployed into areas such as environment security, collection of data, where uh, we, we are in an environment where it is not possible to collect data. We use IoT and software agents, climate change, seismic safety, epidemic pre prevention, detection and response, disaster management, e-health and medical emergencies, computer emergency response and so many other things. All these are now our handling of these situation is through computer programs, big computer program based on AI. In, the, in those programs, we have other kind of program known as software intelligent agent which do many of the things which we, we would like to do be done by human being. That means collecting data, looking at the data and so on. Now how software agent work? They sense the environment through sensors. They actuate the environment, maybe simulate the environment sometime. And then there is a model prepared by the application using AI paradigms and it provides the data to them. That means everything is start becoming self-understanding, self-collecting data, self-interpretation and so on. That's where software agents play a very major role. So software agents help increase the autonomous and intelligent behavior of AI systems. And data connection environment of social systems based on IoT. Or you know that IoT is the IoT has an application in everything. And is again through sensors. And who will collect the data? Human is not impossible of human being. So we have designed software programs with the capabilities which we want to be implemented for various things. Now coming next, probably you have been exposed to machine learning. You have been exposed to deep learning also. Here I will talk about machine learning from the perspective of developing those applications which are relevant to them. Because machine, machine learning and deep learning, they are the basis of all the applications which are there or are going to be developed for human good. So machine learning is a branch of artificial intelligence which focuses on the use of data and algorithms to imitate the way that humans learn, gradually improving its accuracy. <coughs> you are all familiar with this. I will not spend too much time on this. For sake of completeness, I am saying this. Now, Google uses machine learning to filter spam, malware, and attempted phishing emails out of inbox. Isn't it a public good? Machine learning and AI? Bank and credit card you use it to generate warnings about suspicious transactions on your accounts. When you talk to Siri or Alexa, machine learning drives device and speech recognition platform that form. I have already talked that machine learning, that, that is speech recognition or natural language processing, they are the capabilities on which AI work. They are integrated into this thing. See, when your doctor sends you to a specialist, machine learning may be helping them to scan the x-ray and blood test results for anomalies like cancer. Many times what happens, we take the x-rays, but interpretation is not that authentic. Interpretation is not that reliable by human eyes. But when I use algorithms and machine learning tools, then this it has been found to be much more authentic and 
activate in complicated situations like cancer and so on. So as the applications continue to grow, people are turning to machine learning to handle big data, which is unstructured and highly complex. Please see here. Machine learning data generally, it's not that I'm saying always, generally is of a uniform type, say numerical data or maybe simple, simple other uh, video or pictures and so on, simple. But interpreting, interpreting, interpreting that particular date figure, picture may not be within the mechanism of machine learning. So, which means using data, probably, probably uniform data and algorithm will help us to do many things. But when data is heterogeneous and we need to interpret it with a purpose of seeing how it is happening like that, then deep learning comes into picture. Just here is a public good. devices which are based on machine learning. We don't need deep learning techniques here. For example, small shirt, smart ring, smart belt, smart shoes. Here, let us say the smart shoes, there is not much of thinking here. Or a smart watch, smart watch, just take the readings, doesn't do, it doesn't do interpretation. Where interpretation comes, there the mental ability comes. So this is just a wide variety of the wearable devices where machine learning is playing a very important role and they are serving public in a very big way. Those of you who have the uh, uh, you know opportunity of using smart watch, how it helps in the morning walk, how it gives information about our heart beats, how it gives information about our other factors and so on. So just to give you idea how wearable devices contribute to social good, I have taken few of the important applications. A application is Embrace, a tiny sleeping bag like device for premature, premature infants in hospital that can't afford incubators. You must, you must be knowing that many times some children are born, they are, they are, they are, they are, they are, they are let's say they, they are born before their due dates. They need to be put in incubators at a fixed temperature, fixed environment. That is an expensive affair. Now, devices which can be worn on the on the on the on the kid, a tiny sleeping bag like device for premature infant in a hospital that can't afford incubators or that don't have electricity, the warming device can keep babies alive using a simple design, even with the batteries even. That uh, wearable known as embrace. Another wearable is emotive. Wearable enable remote low cost diagnosis with a brain reading headset. It is a headset that can help diagnose neurological diseases for consumers with more money, it can be used to help tame stress also. That means these variable devices can give us, they are very expensive of course at the time, for the time being, but they give us the capability of understanding the psychological aspects or neurological diseases and so on. The wearable devices are also playing a growing role in keeping people safe. Smart bracelets like the Civil Rights Defender. Civil Rights Defender is again a device can trigger an alarm when an aid worker is in trouble. Several wearables are designed to protect women from attack like Fearless. This device has been developed in India, Fearless. Several wearables are designed to protect women from attack like fearless, a device designed for 
design India. Now, if if we if we clip gear less to bra, then it detects the the moment when somebody is attacked, and sends the coordinates of your to your friend or to some reliable police station and so on. So look at this social good which has come up because of the wearable device. Then, then, no, then the next question, as I mentioned, deep learning. You all have been, you have been exposed to, and lot of discussion on deep learning. So, deep learning mimics the way human brain functions via artificial neural networks. Please appreciate, which imitate the inner workings of the human brain to process data, create patterns. And inform decision making. So this is a beyond machine learning. The machine learning is that is a higher level than this one. See, it 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 works on the neural networks. So neural networks, the larger the number of layers between input and output, there are neurons. Neurons, they can be one layer, two layer, three layer. Simple neural network has a one layer, and when we say deep learning neural network, then between input and output, there may be multiple layers. So we have an input layer, hidden layer, and output layer. Now this is precisely how our brain works. If you look at the way neuroscience has come up with the working of our brain, the intelligence that we have, it follows this pattern. This pattern has been simulated in our real life, and that's what deep learning does. It do. so deep learning model mimic human brain working and are based on neural networks. While it takes tremendous volumes of data to feed and build such a system, tremendous amount of data I mean terabyte, petabyte, zettabytes, it can begin to generate immediate results. And there is relatively little need for human intervention when the program are in place. You have all seen how to write the program for this situation and how fast the programs are. Many of you might have been doing research in this area. Now, they, the, the neural network, they mimic the what we have in our brain, uh, but they are doing all these things at a tremendously fast speed. And that's where they become, their utility comes for social good. The deep learning technology enables more complex autonomous program. Autonomous program means program which can take decisions of its own. Like self-driving cars or robots that perform advanced surgery where highly unstructured data are involved. You know, self-driving cars they use deep learning technology. That's again for social good. Computer vision helps computers make sense of 2D and 3D images. The computer vision helps us to differentiate between these and are critical to many practical applications of deep learning, such as augmented and virtual reality. You are familiar with virtual reality. You are familiar with augmented reality. They are all the product of application of outcome. Uh, uh, AI and deep learning and how useful they are, they, some utility we know but they are proving more and more useful. So deep learning, in deep learning and uh, see uh, compared to machine learning, we have uh, you know classification and feature extraction together in deep learning that we done by the machine itself but in the case of machine learning it is feature extraction normally, I wouldn't say all the normally is done by human being and classification is carried out by the machines. Now, some applications of deep learning usage are efficient phase detection and identification in network video surveillance systems. Surveillance system, how to carry out the face recognition. Automated vision based surveillance system to detect drowning incidents in swimming pools. Deep learning techniques for obstacle detection and avoiding in driverless cars. You mean cleaning our sewerage. 
रियल टाइम वहीकल डिटेक्शन ट्रैकिंग एंड काउंटिंग इंडोर इंट्रूजन डिटेक्शन एंड फिल्टरिंग सिस्टम स्मार्ट क्लाउड बेस्ड पार्किंग सिस्टम एंड मशीन लर्निंग फॉर स्मार्ट सिटीज वी हैव वी हैव आवर आवर प्राइम मिनिस्टर इज पुशिंग फॉर स्मार्ट सिटीज दैट्स वेयर दे विल आर पेइंग रोल दे आर लॉट ऑफ प्रोजेक्ट दे ऑटो इमेज डिस्क्रिप्शन एंड कन्वर्ट कन्वर्ट इनटू स्पीच एंड टेक्स्ट फॉर विजुअली इंपेयर्ड व्हिच मीन ऑटोमेटिक रीड द इमेज एंड स्पीक व्हिच इज यूजफुल फॉर द विजुअल इंपेयर्ड पब्लिक example they are good always and so on. then smart detection of frauds and so on. so we find here the deep learning applications involve mental abilities cognitive abilities and what is the driver for this why was it not done let us say 20 years back or 15 years back we didn't have that powerful computers now we would we didn't know how to handle process data in the range of terabyte pentabyte now for this the coming up of the hardware drivers for deep learning apps are gpu graphical processing unit ppu tensor processing unit CPU, you all know that, but they are very fast. You know, multi-core CPU. CPUs are used for mobile deep learning applications. Now, TensorFlow is a very powerful TPU. is an application-specific integrated circuit, ASIC as we call it, to accelerate the AI calculations and algorithms. Google develops it specifically. for neural network machine learning for the tensorflow software tensorflow software is that of google and they are using it to develop the application leveraging existing mobile deep learning frameworks like tensorflow lite cafe 2 android neural networks and so on they help us to implement very efficiently ai and its application for the welfare of public just to fix your ideas see here artificial intelligence deep learning is a subset of machine learning machine learning is a subset of artificial learning artificial learning is devoted to making machine think and act like humans machine learning focuses on enabling computers to perform tasks without explicit programming deep learning is a subset of machine learning based on artificial neural networks now machine and deep learning will affect our life for generations to come and virtually every home every human being will die and that's why you find we are our our, our our government is putting so much emphasis on introducing programs on artificial intelligence its application deep learning computer vision in a big way ai city has come out with four or five program stand alone dtech program where artificial intelligence machine learning and deep learning is the focus so you can imagine the why do we are doing all this why should the government do it government is doing it for public good because everyone knows these application are going to serve public in a big way and beautiful thing about it deep learning algorithms and deep learning processes their performance is much better than machine learning in handling data deep learning is much more efficient with a high performance than machine learning which means preparing applications where for the heterogeneous data will be much more rewarding from the public good point of view than machine learning now drivers for, of ai application for social good is more data are you know, book data 
data you know, comes from how many resources? Mobile phones, from computers, from uh, you know, from uh, cameras, and so on. So everything nowadays we say data is gold. Some people say data is platinum. Everything is dependent on data. Now and the data is very heterogeneous. It may special data, video, text, all kind of data. Special data. Now to handle it will it will depend upon the environment, application, its originating. Then how do we handle it? That's where deep learning comes with better models and algorithms. This would not have been possible if we didn't have hardware like GPU and TPU, PCU. That means the coming of these three components together has given such a big flip to AI applications which concern the human being, their welfare and so on. There's so much opportunities of doing new things implementing new things, getting patents in this field compared to any other field. And another reason is it's an interdisciplinary field. So deep learning and data analysis. Deep learning analyzes big data sets obtained by sensors, IoT, bots, chatbot, Wearable devices, mobile phones, which are often accessible for investigation, analysis, or purpose of societal good. This involves a variety of structures and unstructured data using deep learning. It can contribute to solving problems ranging from identifying fraud based on tax return data to finding patterns of insights in electronic health records that would be very hard for humans to discover, tracing and locating defects in highly complex problems. Now again, he is repeating the technology which are helping in this are the natural language, natural language generation, computer vision and so on. Now let us see Natural, I will give you an example of how NLP can help and contribute in social good and to create societal impact. Now, natural language processing is most useful in domains where information is commonly stored in unstructured textual form, such as the in accident reports, health records, newspaper articles and social media posts such as tweets because these data may come from various various uh, from persons with various languages various dialects and so on that, that means on same topic there may be comment from a person speaking tamil there may be comments speaking hindi there may be comments speaking english and so on there may be comments speaking russian so that means in order that, let us say in the case of climate change, we can get the comments from all over the world. Now how do we interpret this? So here the natural language processing comes to the aid of that thing. As with, as with computer based, as with computer vision based method, in some cases the human may be able to perform the task with greater accuracy than a trained machine learning model, but automated system do it extremely fast providing automated answer to questions asked by citizens through email. There are also cases where AI model outperform humans. You see here, very important. There are cases where AI model could perform could outperform humans in effectiveness, especially in situations that require processing and analyzing vast amounts of information quickly. Examples include monitoring disease outbreaks by analyzing tweets sent in multiple language, local languages, as is presently the case 
in our before us covid 19 inputs kids are coming from all over the country there may are there are different languages different dialects different like and so on now interpreting this and forecasting predicting the covid waves is because of ai and deep learning and you know many of our young scientists are involved in applying these techniques to forecast covid 19 and wave 1 wave 2 wave 3 this is because they have large amount of data now then ai app for language translation now in language translation provides the values in domains where language and communication barriers are a major roadblock take the case in health we often see challenges in treatment due to language barriers between doctors and patients let us say a rural person in an example a rural person comes to the city and there is a say city way if he, he, he or he speaks same language problem is not that much but if the if, if the doctor or the patient do not see the same languages but still the period treatment is required then ai a come to the end language translation can also be used in education to help student learn new languages now then some capabilities or combination of capabilities for example uh, computer vision nlp <coughs> when we combine these capabilities can open possibility for the target population that would not otherwise exist especially cases that involve understanding the natural environmental through interpretation of vision sound and speech for example real time description of one's environment could be game changing in helping blind people navigate their surroundings if a blind people explains in the way he is and we interpret and then prepare a device which can be of help for those people it will be great contribution towards social welfare then ai and data satellite data analysis to interpret natural disaster how to interpret natural disasters you have all been reading about these in the news paper natural disasters may be on land may be in the sea and so on now can now computer vision capabilities especially object detection help you determine which portion of you know the pictures are taken with the help of satellite just to show you one thing here is a picture of a satellite which can show the roads which shows uh, see object detection using set, satellite imagery and interpretation via the showing this is a this picture i took from a study carried out by mckenzie in 2018 report and this was when a hurricane harvey struck in houston so hamare yahan hamare context mein aisi application bhi available nahi thi i took it from there now this application this this imagery from the satellite showing flood floods and there are roads in red and non flood road in orange in houston following the passage of hurricane harvey in 2017 Here, roads, buildings, and several other infrastructure are damaged. A lot of water logging all around. Each of these can be identified. Where to take the aid? Where to rescue the people? Which buildings are, uh, let's say, uh, on the verge of a lot of cracking and so on? All this can be taken in a image in a satellite. Now, these image can be interpreted now ai and satellite data analysis to interpret natural disaster see flooding flood is a natural disaster 
Forest fire is a natural disaster. Take the photograph with the help of satellite. Take a lot of analysis. Then do it. Computer vision capability, specifically object detection, help to determine which portion of satellite Im imagery belongs to the target feature, as for example, detecting road outages. Artificial model was able to identify all roads in a satellite image. Other assessment of critical infrastructure damage required identifying objects such as building outlines. The solution was also able to identify the presence or absence of water in broad areas affected by floods using various analytical methods. Combined, the resulting mapping provide an accurate view of useful roads and undamaged and damaged buildings outdated daily and this is day updated daily this is again very important these pictures come to us every day the imd does for us every day it gives the you know a forecast the various kinds of maybe rain maybe hurricane and so on so we combine the resulting mapping provides provides an accurate view of usable road and an undamaged building updates daily as satellite imagery is refreshed. Satellite data can power AI applications across many other domains such as infrastructure and economy empowerment. The advances in satellite imaginary, imaginary resolution enable visualization and monitoring of more, more related aspects. Now let us come to another important aspect which is which is helping us in the social welfare. You all are familiar with social media. Social media is an internet based technology that facilitates the sharing of ideas, thoughts and information through the building of virtual networks and communities. By design, social media gives users quick electronic communication of content Content includes personal information, documents, videos, photos, pictures, and so on. We, we, we exchange this with our friends, with our relatives. Now, users engage with social media via computer, tablet, or smartphone, via web based software or applications. Now, just, now just recall it AI is used to power features of social media network. Whatever special features you are seeing in the media networks they are all powered by AI without AI I would say AI ML and DLT deep learning techniques social media like Facebook Instagram would not have been what we see them today so through user identification so a, an AI algorithm or machine learning system is used to protect user data and increase privacy of information. Through user authentication, pattern detection, fraud prevention and other features, this technology can help users to improve the security of social media account and content. Now this authentication, this pattern detection, prevention, they are all in the domain of machine learning, deep learning. Just recall, Facebook uses advanced machine learning to do everything from, from serve, you, serve your content, recognize your face in photos to target users with advertising, to advertising company, Instagram, you know, of course owned by Facebook, uses AI to identify visuals, LinkedIn, Use AI to offer recommendations, suggest people you might like to connect with and serve you specific posts in your field. Snapchat, leverages the power of computer vision and AI technology to track your features and overlay filters that move with your face in real time. This you must have been seeing it. They match the dress with your uh, skin. They match the dress with your hairstyle. They, you know, there are so many things. You are, you, now, the reason I'm saying is how they are serving, how they are designed using AI paradigm, 
एम एल एंड डी एल टी एंड देन सर्विंग ह्यूमन गुड नाउ हियर इज एनदर वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग थिंग सी द मोस्ट पॉपुलर मीडिया वेबसाइट दिस दिस डेटा इज ऑफ जनवरी ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन आर दीज आई टेकन Facebook, YouTube, WhatsApp and so on. And if we look at the total number of users, this is this data I took from the internet is around 14 billion. That means 14 billion are on social media. People use social media, various social media application to network and find career opportunities, connect with the people across the globe with linked, like-minded interests. and share their own thoughts feelings and insights online isn't it a public good isn't it for the welfare of the public the individual may be anywhere on this on the earth he gets the information about his dear and, and dear and uh, love and dear he is happy that's his that's his uh, good this happens with like for example we are organize online training we are organizing a uh, online workshop there is so many the, 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 there are different the platforms but the point i am trying to highlight is they all involve ai mlt and dnt here is a, just a quick view which will enable you to recall how these social networks are proving useful for social good through contacts communications virtual community relationship connection skill friendship online conversation developing alliances business discovery business opportunities they are all for welfare of humanity everyone is benefiting the rise of social network and virtual world provide voiceless people this year unprecedented opportunity to assert themselves and experience a sense of belongingness thus promoting social good very important to appreciate i repeat the rise of social network and virtual world provide voiceless people जिन लोग मान ली बहुत कई शाही लोग होते हैं कई डम होते हैं कईयों के और कोई इश्यूज होते हैं दे वॉन्ट टू कन्वे टू योर ब्रदर और सिस्टर सिटिंग लेटर से थाउजेंड ऑफ माइल्स अवे यू कैन डू इट विद दिस एंड यू नो व्हाट्सएप इज फ्री हाउ इज दिस थिंग एंड दे आर ऑल बेस्ड व्हाट्सएप इज बेस्ड ऑन ऑन ए आई एम एल टी एंड डी look at the applications like uh, ola there are, there are, there are um teen number of applications you are familiar with them the point i am trying to highlight is the rise of social network and virtual world provides voiceless people unprecedented opportunity to communicate and assert themselves and experience a sense of belongingness thus promoting social that's how they are promoting social many of you may raise the issue there are many, many there are many you know drawbacks of social media but please appreciate this is what uh, i took it from the net as much as many believe that social media is all about gossip games memes and cat videos there is often a bigger purpose for utilizing these platforms how we utilize is up to us the true beauty of social media is its ability to help individuals harness influences in order to do good for the society jaise wo kehte hain na nuclear energy nuclear bomb is very dangerous kills human beings you are right but if we if i fed and exploit is for energy generation it has benefits and benefits so social media which are designed using ai and its associate can be useful depending use if used responsibly 
if a study has been conducted, a study shows that 83% of Americans want brand sport causes. Now, let's see, it's very interesting. The brand that is cause for sport, cause may be elimination of poverty, cause may be welfare, let's say helping the deprived section of society, let's say in Ethiopia. It may be may, may, you know, training the students, let us say in, 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 uh, in Tanzania. That means there is a cause. Whenever any brand is associated with a cause, cause is for the public good, it could be for medical, for cancer, all, all those things, then 83% of people want to buy that thing. That means they are contributing to that cause, that is social welfare. 41% have bought a product because it was associated with a cause. Cause is a public welfare cause. Public, uh, you know, good and so on. So please appreciate how social media is contributing to welfare. There are billions of social media users around the world. Social media and technology offer greater convenience benefits and connectivity. So example is staying connected with family and friends worldwide via email, <coughs> text, quick access to information and research, online learning, job skills, content delivery, YouTube. What are we doing now? We are using a social media. Zoom use kar rahe It's again based on this. <coughs> now it's a good because we is being used in it. <coughs> Sorry, it's being used in education. It's good because now we could, uh, because of COVID, there were so many limitations, there were so many constraints, there were so many you know problems. But to a sufficient, I would say all extent, to a sufficient extent, we have been able to overcome this with the help of platform like Zoom, Webex. Google, uh, Google, Microsoft Team, and so on. Google Meet and so on. And again, this is, a, this is a public welfare again, but in the context of education. See, involvement of civic engagement, raising funds, social awareness, helps you build relationship with professional community, makes the world seem smaller. Up there, the whole time, need I get your pale with us. Have you how you can talk to your dear and one? Sitting uh, th thousand and thousand miles away. This is a public good. This is a public uh, uh, welfare. Social media for welfare. By using social media responsibility, you all are empowered. We all are empowered to deal with the pandemic crisis, overcoming situation, and help the needy and affected in every possible way. Please see how people are helped each other during the COVID second phase when there was shortage of oxygen, there was shortage of bed, people were helping each other and this instant help was possible because of the social media tools. Now people have helped arrange hospital beds, oxygen cylinder during COVID-19 second wave. Some were giving out vaccine related information while others helped the stay, the end list is endless. Thus indicating the power of the social media for public good welfare. So there are 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 let's say fake news, hate contents, WhatsApp, Twitter, there are there are there are there are Online trolling, AI, ML, and DLT are helping curb negative aspects of social media apps. Now these are again being uh, you know controlled with the help of AI. Social areas. Now next is the areas where AI can help us to make progress. So we have seen. We have seen how the applications of AI, MLT and DLT, MLT is machine learning, 
टेक्निक डी एल टी इज डीप लर्निंग टेक्निक और ए आई एल एम एल टी एंड डी एन टी हैज हेल्प प्लस टू डिज़ाइन एप्लीकेशन फॉर ए वराइटी ऑफ एनवायरमेंट एंड हाउ दोज एनवायरमेंट्स आर रेलिवेंट टू पब्लिक गुड नाउ देर आर मैनी चैलेंजेज ऑल्सो वेयर लॉट ऑफ रिसर्च कैन बी डन आई विल शेयर दैट ऑल्सो विद यू आशुतोष ठीक चल रहा है हेलो 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 ओके थैंक यू नाउ दी आई हैव आई आई शी आई हैव आई हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट दी कंट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ एआई पैराडाइम टू पब्लिक हेल्थ एंड देर ह्यूज नंबर ऑफ अपॉर्चुनिटीज for making progress here in different fields i will share that with you just to apprise you some has been done and much more can be done so ai can contribute social welfare of humanity and progress in several sector some example include the form educational challenges these include maximizing student achievement improving teacher productivity example adaptive learning technology could be used to recommend content to students based on past success and engagement with the material that mean jo pehle humne padhaya tha us par student ka kaisa response raha kyon aisa raha kya wajah thi ai could also be used to detect student distress early before a teacher has noticed you know many unfortunately many student under have a variety of stress maybe family stress maybe education stress maybe uh, social stress and so on and that hampers the development of the student should we allow that no all students are equal before us as teachers they must be helped ai can play a very important role there so in the public and social sector management initiative that are related to the efficiency and effective management of public and social sector entities including public institutions transparency and financial management let me give you an example again ai can be used to identify tax fraud using alternative data such as browsing data retail data and payment history another instance where ai can prove effective is in providing automated question answering via email to improve government interaction with citizens then how in the in the area of health and hunger address health and health and hunger challenges including early stage diagnosis and optimize food distribution see there are many countries where there is food shortage it happen in our context also maybe in selected pockets it but it happens so researchers have created de disease detection ai system using visual diagnosis of natural image such as images of skin skin wound to determine if they are cancerous ai enabled wearable devices which can already detect potential early signs of diabetes through heart rate sensor of data with nearly 85% accuracy could potentially help more than about 400 million people worldwide afflicted by the disease if the devices could be made sufficiently affordable other use other cases include combining various types of alternative data sources such as use your special data social media data telecommunication data online search data vaccination data to help predict virus 
and disease transmission pattern as being done in COVID-19 epidemic. Then next is security and justice. Challenging society that include harm prevention both from crime and other physical dangers as well as tracking criminals and mitigating bias of police forces. You know that police shows bias at many stages. This domain focuses on security, policy and criminal justice issues as a unique category adjacent to public sector management. So using AI to create solutions that help firefighters determine safe path through burning building using our data and so on. So that's, that means security we have or justice we have. Now, in fact, if I share it with you, AI in the in, uh, for social good, this is a discipline. This is going to be a discipline. This will be a discipline which will be an evergreen. There will be always demand of experts working in the area AI and social good. And it will draw experts from various other related or concerned disciplines, like medical, economics, history, engineering, environment, forest, and so on. And there will be, there will be a occasion to have an interdisciplinary powerful environment where persons from different fields will be collaborating and developing application. So AI, this is going to be an evergreen field. Now coming back here, other challenges, environmental challenges. These include sustaining biodiversity and combating combating natural resource depletion, pollution and climate change. Example, robots with AI capabilities can be used to sort recyclable material from waste. There can be, there can be, there can be glass, there can be plastic, there can be some other uh, waste material. Now, this can be a robots can be used to separate these materials. It is not possible for a human being, or more of we should not ask human being also. Robots are doing a good job in this. So Google TensorFlow is using tools Yemena Pelivikada for forest conservation across the world. Its platform can detect illegal logging in vulnerable forest areas through analysis of audio sensor data. And with the coming up of the you know, uh, audio, video and IoT, data can be obtained from a variety of sources, a variety of forms and so on. So other applications include using certain imagery to predict routes and behavior in legal fishing vessels. Now, economic empowerment. How does AI plus MLT plus DLT help them? Open access to economic opportunities and resources including jobs, skill development and market information with a focus on vulnerable deprived population. This year, when I say economic power empowerment, this means there are, you know, backward areas, there are deprived populations which have, do not have the opportunity as others will have it. Now they can be trained about in the skills. They can be trained about the kind of job they will be doing. You are all aware of this, how AI training is being done. Market information, give me jobs available. This is, a, this is economic empowerment. AI can be used for early detection of plant damage through low altitude sensors, including smartphones and drones to improve yield in small farms in agriculture. Now, a, it's a very interesting, there is a project called Farm Beats. Project called Farm Beats. A project called Farm Beats is building edge computing technology. Now, edge computing technology is the pro practice of processing data nearer at the place where the data is being generated. Instead, in a centralized location, which may be somewhere else. 
Now, this could help data driven farming accessible for even the poorest of farmers. This is the economic empowerment. Even poor farmers, when they get the you know, uh, facilities of using these tools, they don't have to go to city. There itself, it's the edge farming. Jahan par farming ho hai, wahin par computing ho hai, wahin par unko real time farm feedback diya ja hai. That's where they get you know lot of benefit. Then equality and inclusion address equality between human beings between between male and female. Address equality inclusion. That means there is no exclusion based on caste, creed, or other things, and self-determination challenges, such as reducing eliminating bias based on race, sexual orientation, religion, citizenship, and disabilities. Equality. Researchers are working on projects which involve use of AI to automate emotion recognition. Please see here. Emotion recognition, a very difficult activity for a human, you know, for, for a human being. Now, by looking at the type of data, that data comes from maybe smartphones, it may come from smart uh, other devices, emotion recognition, and provide social cues, help individuals along the autism spectrum interacting social environments. That means for deprived or artists kind of human being. Then infrastructure management. Infrastructure challenges that could provide public good in the categories of energy, water and waste management, transportation, real estate and urban planning. For example, traffic light networks can be optimized using real-time traffic camera data and internet of things sensor to maximize vehicle throughput. Then passage of uh, and your uh, traffic infrastructure management this is very important because you see look in the cities the kind of traffic we have the kind of uh, you know there's like a crowd we have so traffic lights network can be optimized using real time traffic camera data and internet of things sensors to maximize vehicle throughput Another example, predictive maintenance. Count the part fail over. Count the part could replace karna hai. Maybe a car, maybe a train. The predictive maintenance of public transport systems such as trains and public infrastructure including bridges to identify potentially malfunctioning components. Please see here. Many, many times people do, you know, they are not able to look at a defect. Now, this defect can be detected with the help of AI, LT, ML, and DLT. Thus, indicating thus indicating that. Predictive maintenance, which is based on ML, uh, DLT and MLT of, of transport systems, can contribute to the welfare of society in a very big way. Breakdown predictor data. Now, having looked at all this, please appreciate everything is based on data. Everything is based on data. ML uh, machine learning techniques, MLT, deep learning technique, DLT, they all use data. So data gathering, without data, they will not, we will not be able to do anything. So data gathering and its quality is of immense importance. Data of every type is being generated from various sources. And this is in terms of petabytes, exatabytes, that means 10 raised to the power 12, 15, 13, and so on. Huge data. Now, quality of data plays crucial role for reliability of predictions of AI application in every context. 
data gathering and data quality are big challenges if the data used to build ai models via dlt are not representative or of sufficiently high quality prediction will be erroneous for example if some data are partially missing outdated or contain errors in an application of critical nature this can be a serious risk critical nature could be let us say uh, operation is going on and so on. an example is the crisis response in public and social sector management domains which require data of high integrity and accuracy will not be reliable as far as our data collection during current covid-19 epidemic in our context so that means the data that we use in our ai application for public social good we must be concerned about its safety about its security now ensuring that ai applications are safe and responsible for human use is an essential prerequisite for wide scale threat deployment deployment for social aims seeking to further social good with technologies that are dangerous for human who not only run counter to their core mission but could also spark a backlash given the potentially large number of people involved now please appreciate that in this context there are large number of persons this this is a, it is not this is a greater good for a greater number there is great number of persons who are influenced by these apps that's what the purpose of social good is greater good for greater number so the great number of people are involved if any mistake if any error is made this can be very dangerous so for technology that could affect life and well being it will be important to have in place safety mechanism that comply with the existing laws and regulation of the maybe of the country maybe of the city and so on then the data must correspond to those things example if an ai application misdiagnoses patients in hospitals without a safety mechanism in place particularly the system that are directly connected to treatment processes for example during operation process the outcomes could be catastrophic indicating the data that we take and the application that we have must have built in strong security and safety nets an example is in predictive maintenance now if an ai model fails to recognize the component of a bus or train need to be replaced that could result in a major accident the framework of accountability and liability for harm done by ai is still evolving is will be kaam ho raha hai kyunki abhi to we we are developing we are our side learning many things about ai ai its application and then the issue that i am talking to you safety and security it's being again you know be worked out and framed that's why i will not talk about this any further so opportunities for progress and public welfare by ai application are there are numerous opportunity to advance for researcher this is a, a this is a slide for researcher there are numerous opportunity to advance work and progress in ait enabled application for public welfare better data collection digitization and curation particular around urgent priorities better assessment of integration of data sources currently not being used together the so data come variety of sources there is lot of work to be done to integrate that data for purpose of interpretation better models and predictions of individual behavior to support better inferences better evaluation of existing and historical policies to understand their implications this have is enablement of ai advances for social welfare so the this is the reason i have discussed these things with you is that we are in a very exciting age of human intelligence being 
brought forward with the help of technology that is computers. And that technology has such a vast amount of applications in a such a great variety of problems that human life can be made a very good provided we are able to design, we are able to understand and implement those applications and use the relevant method which help us to create the realistic situations. Now here I come to an end of my session and thanks, questions please. Now let us say, I, I am looking at the chat, chat box, let us say what are the questions here please, please do ask, see this, this session is slightly different from what you are exposed to, that was a, you know, that was a very specific, this is something new, you know, the upcoming field and then bring out those things or certainly has many things which may be of interest or maybe sometime, maybe I will just surprise also. Question please. Am I audible? Yes sir, yes sir. Yes sir. Sir, uh, the students, students, uh, sorry, participants are asking question through chat, sir. I am looking at the chat box. Mein. Uh, yes, sir. Sir, participants are writing a wonderful session and excellent session, sir. I am so thankful, dear participants. <laughs> yes, sir. I was scared of interest. When uh -huh. the professor asked me, sir, please give me a lecture. I said, this is not in any field. नहीं सर आप आपने तो सारी चीजें बिल्कुल शुरू से लेके लास्ट तक हर चीज बता दी डिटेल में और आपका एक्सपीरियंस सर आपने शेयर किया जो हमारे बहुत वैल्यूबल है सर थैंक यू सर मुझे लगता है आई थिंक देर आर नो क्वेरीज फ्रॉम द पार्टिसिपेंट साइड तो थैंक यू सर थैंक यू द रेगुलरली द कैंडिडेट्स पार्टिसिपेंट्स आर राइटिंग Good session and wonderful session. So, uh, thank you very much, sir, for this uh, wonderful session, and thank you for sharing lots of things of machine learning, artificial intelligence, uh, for societal development. Uh, as the theme of our FDP is advances of uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning in societal development. So you has uh, you have touched all the. Um, uh, facts of this societal development also. So uh, thank you very much, sir. And uh, you have also explained about satellite imaginary, imagery and social welfare, how AI is used for the social welfare. So thank you once again, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, Stop it. Now we stop the session. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, uh, proceeding forward to our next activity, I have already uh, informed to participant that now we are uh, sending one link of quiz on the WhatsApp group. So, after half an hour, uh, exactly at uh, this is. 1 a.m., 1 p.m. So uh, we will start the concluding session at 1.30. So after, after 30 minutes, we will start concluding session. So till the time you have to uh, complete the assignment quiz. So it is mandatory for this FDP. So after 30 minutes, we will again meet on the same link.
तो थैंक यू पार्टिसिपेंट थैंक यू सर थैंक यू थैंक यू आशीष बहुत बढ़िया सर बहुत आपने इतना समय दिया और सर आप आए यही हमारे लिए बहुत बड़ी बात है आपका एक्सपीरियंस इतना लंबा एक्सपीरियंस है जब हमने आईटी में पढ़ना शुरू किया होगा तब आप एआई तब आपने रिसर्च शुरू कर दी थी तो हमने शुरुआत की होगी शायद तब आपने तब एआई की काफी रिसर्च कर चुके होंगे तो इसलिए सर हमारे लिए आपका आना हमारे लिए बड़ा इम्पोर्टेंट है सर इस एफ हमारी सक्सेसफुल होगी सर थैंक यू सर बट थैंक यू सर पंत जी आएंगे सर प्रोफेसर पंत इज बिजी ऑन अनदर मीटिंग टुडे वी आर आल्सो ऑर्गेनाइजिंग आरडीसी मीटिंग अच्छा अच्छा तो इट इज प्री शेड्यूल्ड फ्रॉम लास्ट लास्ट मंथ सो सो ही वाज बिजी इन दैट मीटिंग तो मेरी उनको नमस्ते कहिए ना फोन हां जी सर जी सर जी सर ओके थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू सर थैंक यू आई विल स्टॉप ओके ओके सर ओके जी सर जी सर जी सर नमस्ते हाँ मैं, मैं बस अभी है
dear participant the chief guest of the session will connect very soon so till the time we have to wait so thank you
डॉक्टर आशुतोष गुड आफ्टरनून सर गुड आफ्टरनून सर सर कल वी स्टार्ट या या प्लीज प्लीज गो हेड ओके सर अर्लियर द बेटर तो गुड इवनिंग स्टीम चीफ गेस्ट ऑफ वेलिडिटी सेशन प्रोफेसर दुर्गेश पंत सर डायरेक्टर स्कूल ऑफ कंप्यूटर साइंस एंड आई टी आई सी टी उत्तराखंड ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी डेलीगेट्स एंड इमिनेंट स्पीकर प्रोग्राम कोऑर्डिनेटर्स पार्टिसिपेंट एंड एवरी वन प्रेजेंट इन दिस क्लोजिंग सेशन ऑफ फाइव डे लॉन्ग ऑनलाइन फैकल्टी डेवलपमेंट प्रोग्राम अंडर ए आई सी टी ट्रेनिंग एंड लर्निंग अटल अकेडमी ऑन एडवांसेज ऑफ आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस एंड मशीन लर्निंग इन सोसाइटल डेवलपमेंट which is held from 16 august to 20th august i also express my deep and heartful gratitude to all thanks to audience for their patience listening and listening towards end of the read i hope all the participant has enjoyed the faculty development program now as starting the valedictory session first of all i would like to invite Dr Jyoti Rani assistant professor department of mathematics school of science uttarakhand open university haldwani to read the report of entire 5 day long fdt over to dr jyoti thank you sir thank you for inviting me to read the report of this 5 day long fdt the fdp is started on 16 august 2021 the school of computer science of uttarakhand open university in collaborated with all india council for technical education aicte completed the five days long online faculty development program on advances of artificial intelligence and machine learning in societal development with aim to train machine using artificial intelligence professor durgesh pant director school of computer science and information science welcomes chief guest professor r k soni director atel academy aict also vice chancellor professor o p s neki gives his presidential address and thanks the chief guest for the valuable presence registrar professor h s nayar give board for thanks the entire session was coordinated by ashutosh kumar bhat in the technical session the participants were learn artificial intelligence and machine learning by various resource person university assistant professor shri balram dakoti Dr. Gopal Dar and Professor Dr. Jitain Pande coordinated whole FDT. The first day report, Professor Durgesh Pant, School of Computer Science and IT, Uttarakhand Open University, Haldwani, gave his lecture on subject of spectrum of social significance of artificial intelligence and machine learning, and also discussed about the impact of artificial intelligence on life. Dr. Abhay Saxena, Dev Sanskriti Vishwavidyalaya, delivered a lecture on the topic machine learning, innovative and holistic approach. He said that it is very important to understand the difference between human and machine. Dr. Sandeep Kumar, Professor IIT Roorkee, delivered a detailed lecture on opportunities in applications of artificial intelligence and machine learning, Indian perspective. second day report dr mayank agrawal department of computer science engineering gurukul kangri haridwar uttarakhand delivered his talk on the topic machine learning and blockchain he demonstrated the blockchain sample working dr darshan darshana patak symbosis university 
Pune discuss about machine learning techniques and framework. He she explained the statistical background of machine learning and statistics for machine learning in the in she discuss about machine learning applications. Dr. Sandeep Kumar, Right Zone Technologies Private Limited, uh, gave his talk on identification and implementation machine learning using Python. He began his lecture by introduction of machine learning. He also discussed performance matrices. In the end of this session, he demonstrated the hand on one of real life applications using Python. In third day report, Dr. Viner Iswal, Professor, Department of Computer Science, Rohilkan University, Bareilly, discussed about AL and ML. Dr. Viner Iswal explained big data. This data is very useful for mobile connected device, all connected device, wireless connected device, connected autonomous thing device. Dr. Ashutosh Kumar Bhatt, Associate Professor, Department of Computer Science and Information Technology, Uttarakhand Open University, Halwani, talk about differences in soft computing and hard computing. He discussed about algorithm computation and emphasis uh, the need of machine learning applications. Dr. Bhatt also discussed artificial intelligence, machine intelligence, machine learning. He also discussed about the industrial revolution and era of compute. Dr. Sunil Kumar, Assistant Professor, Sir, J.C. Bose Technical uh, Campus, Kumar University, Campus Bhintal, discussed machine learning at length. He talked, focused on support, vector introduction and working of SPM algorithm put into the context of real life applications like agriculture here, forecasting, his lecture was extremely useful. In four days, Dr. Jitain Pandey, Associate Professor, Computer Science, Uttarakhand Open University, delivered his lecture on the topic, Understanding Open Educational Resource. Dr. Pandey discussed about to education of India of open distance learning. He also discussed about OC OECD, Dr. Pandey discussed about organization for economic cooperation and development, the Cape Town Open Education Declaration, OER Commons. This session is very wonderful. Professor R. K. Srivastav, Department of Computer Science and Engineering, National University, Lucknow give his lecture on artificial neural network in machine learning that is very useful for human beings. Dr. Srivastav explained detailed his machine learning and some their application. Professor Shishir Kumar, BBA Central University, Lucknow, delivered his lecture on the topic design thinking for innovation using AL and ML. Professor Shishir Kumar, also discuss to what is design thinking this process used for problem solving developed to address big problems in five day report dr mrinali shah consultant and trainer delivered his lecture on neural network analysis for pattern recognition professor ps grover former head Department of Computer Science, University of Delhi, delivered his lecture on this topic, AL, for social welfare and progress. Thanks, sir. Over to you. Thank you, Dr. Jyoti. Thank you, ma'am. Any program cannot be complete without feedback of its valuable participants. So in this sequence, I request and invite some of the participants for the Hello. feedback. Uh -oh. First of all, I would like to invite Dr. Siram Deshpande from Maharashtra. 
Munal Deshpande from Maharashtra for the feedback of FTP. Good afternoon, all. Yeah. yeah. Sir, am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah. So, good afternoon, all of you. Uh, first thing is, uh, though I am from Maharashtra for last 24 years, I'm in Chennai. So, I belong equally to Tamil Nadu also now. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I am uh, uh, working here as uh, associate professor in Sri Shiva Subramaniam Nadar College of Engineering, Chennai. Uh, I congratulate uh, all the organizers wholeheartedly for conducting such a wonderful FTP. And we all uh, benefited from this. All the lectures were extremely useful. We got a lot of information. And now we are much more confident about AI, machine learning, and uh, even the languages which were covered, the softwares which were explained, and uh, the real-time application everything was very excellent and related to the program and we look forward for more such programs and also I would like to extend that when we conduct uh, here in uh, SSN college uh, FDPs or STPs or uh, any keynote addresses I would like to keep in touch with you for the same and we'll be privileged to have you here uh, for our programs also so let us further collaborate in this direction and uh, I again, once again, congratulate all the organizers uh, for handling the queries of uh, participants uh, patiently and uh, taking care of all the things excellently. Thank you. Thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. Now I would like to invite uh, Dr. Sinti Bist for the feedback of, of FDP. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much, sir, for uh, giving me information about this FDP. Through Ashutosh, sir, only we have joined FDP. I am Assistant Professor of Mathematics at Birla Institute of Applied Sciences. And since it is about machine learning and artificial intelligence, so this is something new for me. And the sessions were wonderful, especially um, the session of um, Professor Shishir Kumar, Dr. Sandeep, and uh, Professor Durgesh Pant. So these things have really motivated me to take um, the aspects of mathematics which are applied in uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence as my new research area. And uh, again, once again, congratulations everyone for um, conducting such a wonderful FDP. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, now again, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Namit Gupta for the feedback of FDP. Yes, sir. So I am Namit Gupta, assistant professor from Tirthankar Mahavir University, Moradabad, Uttar Pradesh. Firstly, I would like to express my gratitude to all the speakers, Professor Professor Durgis Pansar, Ashtosh sir, Abhay sir, Mayanka Agarwal sir, Vinay Rishipal sir, and Gopal Dar sir. For sharing their knowledge on the topic of AI and ML is the social development, such as spectrum of the social engineering of AI and ML, machine learning and inno innovative and holistic approach for the so, uh, uh, social well-being, the secure ML application for the blockchain, ML algorithm, principles and applications, artificial intelligent network and demonstrate for the practical implementations. I, I am my uh, future that I got the change to the listening and the learning for the such great uh, Academicians. I learned several thinking about the AI and ML, like basic in, uh, introduction of the topic or their scope or their demand or their advantages and drawbacks. So the, speaking, I, ha I have already many knowledge, uh, knowledgeable thinking for, uh, uh, for this atal FDP. I will surely try, uh, try to transfer for the knowledge to my student at last. I am thankful to the organizer of the faculty development program for the such inform informative sessions and also required them to the organizer uh, such event in the future as well. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Finally, and now I would like to invite uh, Dr. Sinu Agrawal uh, for the feedback of MDP. Good afternoon to all. Uh, sir, thank you. 
open your camera also please sir my camera actually it is not okay. working okay uh, good afternoon to all uh, thank you sir for inviting me to present the feedback as i find it very interesting to uh, know about the basic things basic from starting from basic the sir uh, durgesh sir has already started from the basic explaining each and everything so uh, i find it very very useful in my uh, research work which we are doing like in ai and mi ml ml these are the new areas for these days and every research is going to be take place in this only so each uh, professor has presented it very well and we have learned a lot thank you sir thank you thank you ma'am thank you very much uh, uh, now i would like to invite our chief guest of this uh, five day long faculty development program on uh, advances of artificial intelligence and machine learning in societal development um, professor durgesh pan sir uh, we welcome you sir please sir over to you sir uh well <laughs> good afternoon to you all it is um, such a pleasure and five days already um, went by uh, we started uh, five days back and in a jiffy five days have already uh, passed on so look at uh, the velocity of uh, time how it flies so it 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 is like a family it is like an ai and ml family so first and foremost uh, thank you all from the so from the core of my heart i thank you for being part of the family so it is so wonderful it is so 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 thankful we all are and uh, first and foremost uh, thanks to uh, the coordinator chief coordinator dr ashutosh bhat for uh, you know bringing up uh, this whole idea and for uh, making it a very very successful workshop and it is it is successful because i can see till the very end and a very eminent professor today uh, there was professor p s grower and a person who is uh, he is close to 80 but the kind of enthusiasm he had for this he, you can imagine so um, he started his um, uh, career way back uh, Fifty, uh, fifty, uh, more than you know, half a century back, and is still going on pretty uh, strong. And so he was, uh, you know, full of appreciation. So it it is a huge compliment. So uh, thank you, Dr. Ashutosh. Thank you, Dr. Jitendra. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Gopal, and this entire team and. Uh, The, the 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 faculty who was reading out uh, the report uh, jyoti and dr bhat everyone so all of you uh, coordinator conducted the whole program so very well and uh, our vice chancellor uh, because uh, from the word go he was pretty enthusiastic in terms of taking it forward so thank you uh, uh, um, professor negi for the support that he he gave us our registrar of the university for the necessary support what of thanks will come later on but what i am saying i am pretty happy with the way uh, dr uh, it was dr uh, desh pande from chennai i have spent a lot of time in chennai and uh, uh, so uh, i know for certain um, uh, this this workshop has been conducted out here you know in in in, in, the, in the foothills of himalayas and there she is close to the sea so look at uh, the, the the width the length and breadth of you know the, this uh, coverage of this workshop so this all india workshop it is of consequence more than 100 participant delegate very eminent because they are all educationists researchers teachers so they all joined in it is kind of a mahayagya so everybody was participating few lectures may be very very good few lectures may be very enticing few lectures can be very lucid few lectures can be really application oriented few lectures can be really you know concept giving kind of but overall it was an attempt and you know ai and ml especially these are pretty specialized um, Uh, concepts topics subjects so and uh, so to find in such a short time such a resource person is a very tedious 
task. But uh, I'm really uh, thankful to Professor Sony, uh, Director AICT, for uh, you know the kind of support he gave, and to all the delegates because I know uh, these um, difficult times and online again technology has really helped. I was thinking how AI and ML can really you know help us in terms of assist in terms of uh personalized assessment also how each one of you could uh, uh, relate to it could uh, really you know uh, assess and uh, kind of assimilate the whole thing so uh, it, it is one of the projects for me now so any workshop anything on the basis of the kind of data points through the feedback uh, we'll be getting so we'll get to know uh, so, so some model uh, we can work on. So again, this can be for uh, IT and computer science, mathematics, information science people. This can be uh, a, a good topic. So personalized learning and personalized assimilation and uh, uh, kind of you know the uh, how much uh, can we can we can we take forward. So overall, it was uh, lovely. It was uh, um, superb seeing you all and so many teachers. So uh, somehow it, it was difficult because early morning, uh, Dr. Ashutosh used to tell me nine o'clock sharp, this is going to start and kind of. So more than on than off, I was also part of it and um, having uh, other assignments too. But it was really very enjoyable and the kind of, you know, every time round, uh, the feedback, the other things. So rest assured. Now it's a community and we can build on this community layer by layer and we can come up with something really fantastic. And uh, the first day I, I maintained it, the country needs it. We, we, we on a, on a rather more than this academic part, okay, it, it is already done. But more than that, our country really needs it. The kind of threats we have at the moment, you know, geopolitical situation is changing so very fast in our neighborhood especially our Western Front. So it is changing so very fast. We need to have a rock solid AI ecosystem in the country. And who is going to do it? Our educators got to do this. Our researchers got to do this. Our universities got to do this. That's very, very important. And for that, this is from our side. This is one Ahuti from our side in this, in this great yagya. We got to have a community ready especially in AI, in ML, in deep learning, we got to have people. And similarly in cybersecurity, similarly in other technologies, because if we are not, you know, if we don't have this kind of readiness, so the threat is imminent and, um, you know, uh, who will take it forward? So therefore, I see this entire exercise, this entire endeavor with that perspective. So it is our mission to take this computational intelligence and all these things forward so that it reaches every corner and let all of us become, you know, ambassadors to this, uh, to these technologies. That is why I'm saying it is, we, we got to develop communities, we got to have collaborative things, we got to have augmented learning by all means on all accounts then we can take it, uh, you know, forward. Academic exercise, writing papers, developing this thing is, that's very, very important, of course, from the career point of view, from our other uh, assignments for accreditation, other things. But more than that, we need to have from this national point of view and uh, from that angle, we need to have a better understanding of these technology, which are going to decide the future of our entire, you know, not only this generation country, but humanity as a whole. So that's very important. And uh, I don't know whether this is the right appropriate time to talk about these things, but uh, because you are extremely, extremely enlightened people, very educated. So therefore, I, 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 from my side, I um, put forward my views. These are my inner feelings. So thank you very much. And let us all be torch bearer to this, this thing. Big thank you to this entire team, to Dr. Rashutosh, Dr. Chitin, and the entire team of Uttarakhand Open Unity and above all, all the daily, all the delegates and uh, participants, all the participating universities, institutions, uh, organizations, everyone. And uh, big thank you to all the resource persons who are part and parcel, you know, uh, of this entire uh, workshop, those who 14 lectures we did have. So all of them, I thank them from the core of my heart. A big thank you, a big thank you to you all. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you always.
for your support and guidance we thank you again sir so now i would like to invite dr jitendra pandey associate professor school of computer science and it uttarakhand open university for board of thank you over to professor jitendra pandey sabhi ko namaskar honorable vice chancellor of uttarakhand open university convener of the workshop professor durgesh pant coordinator for this fdp program dr ashutosh bhat directors of the school professor nayal registrar uttarakhand open university and dear participants it's my privilege to have been asked to propose a vote of thanks on this occasion i on behalf of uttarakhand open university our partner aict atal academy and on my own behalf extend a very hearty vote of thanks to all people who are directly or indirectly are a part of this five day fdp program on advances of artificial intelligence and machine learning in societal development first of all i would like to propose hearty vote of thanks to our honorable vice chancellor professor ops negi for his presence guidance and support at every level i am very grateful to professor r k soni director aict for atel program for giving us this opportunity to organize this event and for gracing this the for gracing the inaugural session of this fdp program as a chief guest i would also like to thank professor pan for his address moral support and guidance i specifically thank dr ashutosh bhat who have been the backbone of this event finally i again want to thank our directors registrar professor nayal our ict team our organizing committee dr jyoti rani dr gopal dar mr palam da forty and all the participants of this two week online fdp program i would like to thank all the participants for making this event a success thank you very much over to dr bhat now thank you thank you very much sir sabhi ko namaskar thank you so finally we are declaring the closing of this fdp and uh, we have given the link of uh, uh, quiz to the participant already we have given the link i i think all the participant has filled that link and result we will announce later uh, and certificate will be provided by iit and we directly send to the email address of the participant thank you all participant once again